are sharing with us. So please, I'm begging you. And you would have observed, I, I wouldn't need to go to hostel to chase anyone out because they will soon start chasing themselves and they will soon start chasing student affairs division. I'll be merciless dealing with all of them. And that is, and I beg my colleagues never to come and beg me. And I think I'll beg you not to beg me. So please, I will not chase anybody and I'm not going to run after anybody. You are 400 level students, you are not yet a graduate. It's only the university senate that can declare that you're a graduate. You are just final year student. I'm not angry because you don't know. So, but you are just our final year student. Until we so decree that you're a graduate, you are never a graduate of this university until senate says so. So please let, and not even soon to graduate because you don't know how soon. <laughs> There is what we call FNG1, FNG2. And after FNG2 is withdrawal. Fanaya not graduating one, Fanaya not graduating two, and withdrawal. So those things are there, you may not know, but we know, I've been a member of Senate since 2014, so it's not new to me. So please behave yourself accordingly and don't let you finish signing out that you did for yourself. When you've not been signed up at the university, get it to your head at all. Please behave yourself until convocation that you have some liberty. Hmm? We are not mean, but we have to always tell you the truth so you don't throw caution to the wind. I once again appreciate all of you who are here this moment, and I want to sincerely thank you for coming. And I want to enjoy enjoying you to make sure you participate all through. In between absenteeism is absence, as far as I'm concerned. In between excusing yourself is absence, as far as I'm concerned. Sorry, I may sound so harsh this morning, but I got to be. Thanks so very much. A round of applause for the dean. Thank you very much, sir, for your remark. And I stand to be corrected, not soon to be. <laughs> okay. Quickly, I'll be reading the profile of today's co-hosts of the seminar with the topic, starting your own lucrative business in person of Akin Pelu Emmanuel. Emmanuel Akin Pelu, founder of Studio 92 Nigeria. Studio 92 Nigeria is a multimedia company. He's also a media analyst with over five years of experience in photography, videography, editing and content creation, graphics and infographics design, media coverage and visual reporting. Highly skilled in using graphic design software such as Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro and Illustrator. He holds a BSc in business administration from Samuel Adebayga University in Edo State. He possesses strong communication and interpersonal skills and enjoys networking via various platforms, including social media. His excellent media skills have provided him with prestigious clients, leads with field work and experience in over 12 states in Nigeria and four countries. Wide ranging as an associate photographer and graphic designer for United Nations Population Funds, UNFPA. Nigeria, UNFPA Nigeria, capturing key stakeholders events such as the UN Secretary General Youth Envoy's visit to Nigeria, and the executive director of UNFAPA visit to Nigeria. He has also advocated and worked on documentaries with the wife of the vice president of Nigeria, H.E. Oludolako Osibanjo, on the fight against illicit drug use among youths. He's currently the media and communication expert in the United States, United Arab Emirates ambassador to Nigeria, Cameroon, and Burkina Faso. What an achievement. Over 500 people. Thank you. Over 500 people across Nigeria have been successfully trained through training programs of media related courses. He spearheaded. What an achievement. Please permit me to make welcome Mr. Imawel Akim Pelu. Good morning, everybody. 
Sorry, can you all hear me? Good morning. Emmanuel, we can hear you. Please, can you go ahead? Thank you. Okay, all right. So, and um, thanks for everything. Thanks for the honor. And uh, I'll say good morning to everyone once again. I want to appreciate the Honorable Dean, um, Dr. Ejola. I want to thank um, Mr. Shegun for this privilege. And um, I want to also say um, thank you for attending this program to all graduate students very soon. Um, I'll be talking about um, starting the creative business. As you all know, I graduated from Samadegbega University. And uh, it might shock you guys that um, Student 92 actually started from Samadegbega University. And um, okay, so I'm going to give a brief breakdown on about Student 92. Student 92 started in Samadegbega University when I started um, um, a group, or we created a group with Adura. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Adura. Anita, Anita spoke yesterday. So we came together as a group of um, creative, um, creative students, started our company. Adra is currently doing very well in IT. It deals with website designing, website branding, and stuff like that. And Anita is also not doing bad in our, in our writing and um, you know, in our own space as well. So let's go straight to the business of today. I'm going to share something with you. Let me share my screen. Just a moment, please. Mm. Um, multiple, I want to share. Sorry, media guys, can you please allow me to share the screen? Can you accept from your end? Um, please, I need access to be able to share my screen. Okay. All right. So is that visible to everyone? Yes. Okay. All right. So, come on. Okay, so talking about lucrative business, what is lucrative business? Lucrative business has to do with anything that um, creates wealth, make profit. You know, you're exchanging your product and services for profit. I deal with services mainly, as you all know, I don't produce anything, but it's not bad if you're producing. I deal with um, multimedia and um, graphic design. I'm actually in the tech space. So there are a few things I would love you to consider. And um, please, you all permit me, most of my um, topic or most of my conversation will be related to my stay and my time in Sao, because frankly speaking, Samadewe has actually contributed a lot to my life. The people I met there and um, the people I'm still dealing with till now. Let me, uh, you guys might not remember, but uh, let me talk about Mr. Ezekiel Kintola. He was one of the ICT um, staff and uh, Mr. Babatunde Taiwo as well. Both of them were my, you know, mentor in school then, always pushing me like, okay, man, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. And uh, today I'm grateful that, you know, I met both of them, super grateful I met both of them. So there are four things I would love you to consider before starting a business. You know, number one, what do you love doing? You know, you don't just want to do business because, oh, someone is um, thriving in this space. Okay, let me just go there and, um, you know, do the same thing. You know, after, when we came out of school and then I continued with my photography stuff, my media stuff, uh, it took me about three to four years. Yeah, because we graduated 2016. And um, let me say, I didn't come to Limelight until about um, 2020, there about. And people started coming like, okay, Mano, I want to learn photography. But the question is, why do you want to learn photography? Do you actually have the knowledge 
or do you have a passion for this thing? You know, it's all about passion. What do you love doing? Because if you don't have passion for it, over time, you're not making profit. People are not calling you. You get tired. You look for the next business to do. So you need perseverance for this. So what do you love doing? What do you have passion for? Do you have passion for, you know, making air? Do you have passion for, you know, acting? You know, the, what you just love doing, you know, something you can do without uh, anybody stressing you. Because if you ask me now, okay, um, you want to come and cook. I feel like you're stressing me, but there are some people that will gladly cook for you and they enjoy it and they're making profit for me. They're making money for me. They're making, you know, they've created wealth for themselves in, um, in cooking. Also looking at your environment, you know, during my stay in style, I came into South at um, 200 level as a DE student. So before then, I went to a graphic school in um, Abuja called DOT. So I learned graphic design in um, DOT. So when I got to South, I realized that most people don't really have an idea of um, graphic designing. So I, I woke up to Mr. Ezekiel as a then. I was like, oh, Mr. Ezekiel, I can design. And uh, OK, would you like to try me out? I was like, yeah, he gave me a couple of um, school jobs to do, design some um, flyers for school uh, uh, websites as a then. You know, and I was like, okay, cool, you can do this. So I started doing that. Then, before you know it, I started doing graphics for my friends, doing assignments for my friends. Then there is this thing I'm sure you all can relate very well to, um, bed, bed the DPs. You know, when you want to do your birthday, you want somebody to post your DP, post your picture. So I started doing bed the DPs for people as well. And um, whether you like it or not, I was being paid. So one way or the other, you know, some. Okay, the most funny thing about the OT was one day I designed something for someone. We're all students now, we, we go broke. So I was broke at, as I then, and uh, I designed for a friend of mine then. His name is um, Glover. Guess what Glover gave to me back in return? Food, a plate of food in exchange of, you know, beddy um, cover. So, you know, things like that, it, 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 it sounds funny. It sounds like, you know, not too serious. By the end of the day, Consistency is the key, whether you like it or not. You just have to keep doing it. So my environment and the people around me demanded from my services. Either you're doing your projects, you need to be able to put some um, pictures, put words together, just like what you're seeing on the screen now, created on PowerPoints. Not everybody knows how to do it. So when you have a knowledge on that, whoever that's coming to ask you for it, you have to pay for my time. I took my time to learn this thing. So I'm, I, I will not just teach you for free. I'm not saying you should charge everybody that comes around you. So, but at least you should know when to demand for return from people. Also, you should also have plans for your business. I sat, um, when I was in South, okay, I, there was no concrete plan, but I knew that, yes, I was going to be focused on the multimedia. I studied business at me, but I knew I wanted to focus on multimedia. No plan, just ideas, just um, rough um, rough sketches and everything. Like, okay, what do you want to do? You want to become a photographer. You want to become the best video editor. You want to become the best um, graphic designer. But there was no concrete plans. But, you know, coming out of school, even before coming out of school then, we had this um, entrepreneurship class, um, GST. I can't remember the code, but GST. And um, I remember Dr. Ellen and um, Dr. Shola taught us about business plan, yeah, which actually um, helped me to, you know, shaping my business and um, coming out of school, like, okay, no, this is what I really want to do for myself. And I'm staying on that path, you know. But, uh, I can only wish for, you know, better days ahead. And also, you should ask yourself, the kind of business you want to do, can, can it sell? You know, can I sell? Can I, you know, um, some people, I have some students that came around, sometimes they're going like, okay, Manu, I'm going back to school. I want to sell clothes. I want to sell this. I want to sell that, blah, blah, blah. And I asked the student, how many people are selling clothes in your school? He said about 10 people. Okay, so why do you think you'll be able to sell your clothes? Why would people want to buy your clothes? There was no um, concrete answer. So I, I advised them to look for something else, to be original or you know, to be different from what other people are selling so people can actually buy because... If A, B, C are selling clothes, it will be difficult for me to buy from D. You know, so you should um, ask yourself, okay, can I sell this business? Learn about the pros and cons of any business. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fifth one should be, are you ready to take risk? 
every business have its um, its own risk. I satisfy. I, uh, I sacrificed my laptop. Then my first ever laptop, my mom bought for me. Then in Sao, because um, one, I was not making profit from it, but I was doing all the graphic design. I was going from one place to another, regardless of the light condition. The power might be very low, but I don't mind. I just want to like you know go the extra miles to make sure that yes, you know I deliver this uh, these services and I learn more. So you should also know about the risk of any business. Don't just dive into any business. People come to meet me, or oh, you might want to do photography, but do you un actually understand the risk associated with photography? Let me talk about photography. Now, for photographers, we go to events, we have our camera gears with us, and we're taking pictures, and all of the sudden, someone eats you and you break your lens. The cheapest lens you can find is about, let me say $200, that's about maybe 100, 150. That's like the cheapest lens you can find. So do you, act, do you know how to protect yourself from you know, incurring such risk. So before you dive into any business, you need to know the risk of all business. You know, you don't just um, um, say, okay, no, this guy is making profit. Let me dive into it and start making money. No, you should know the risk of every business. Now, I'll be talking about a um, few businesses you can start with about 200,000 in Nigeria. I'm sure most of you want to do that. 200,000 is not a lot. Of, it's a quite a lot of money, but not that much looking at the economy in Nigeria. And uh, I'll make mention of a few people that did this business in South, and uh, I think they're still doing it. Number one, laundry business. Laundry and dry cleaning business. There's a guy called Joseph. Joseph was my neighbor in South. He used to dry clean for us in school. We pay him and vice versa. I, did, I designed this logo. So... You know, I, I paid him for dry cleaning my clothes. He paid me for doing his logo. Dry cleaning business is a very lucrative business current, uh, currently because everybody, you know, wants to look good, wants your clothes to be well ironed, you know. And also, um, importation of wares, that's clothes. Those are few businesses you can start in school and probably outside school. Wares, livestock, car washing, and not everybody wants to do car washing because you're like, oh, you're yeah, a big boy now. You don't want everybody to see you washing your car, but car washing is also a very good one. Event planning, barbing salon, web designing, computer science students, you can take advantage of this. Web designing, you can also be a social media creator. Yeah, social media creator, you know, you, you, you help companies to, you know, create content. Um, a social media handler currently is receiving about 100 to 150 outside, depending on the company you're working for. So as an IT student, or you don't even need to be an IT student. We all use Instagram. We all use WhatsApp. We all use um, Twitter. We all use LinkedIn. So if you can use these apps very well, then um, I think you should go into social media branding and um, content creator. Also, fashion, cosmetics, and fragrance business. It's also a very lucrative business. Online affiliated marketing. Online affiliated marketing. Okay, let me explain that. That's, for example, just like a merchandise for um, Jumia. You can be, you can become an agent for Jumia. You can become an agent for Conga. You can become an agent for um, Amazon. So you affiliate yourself with this because they already have the customer base. All you just need to do is, you know, you're, you're acting like an agent between the main company and the customers. And small shops. For those of you that can cook very small job is also a very good business. You all know 12 basket. 12 basket goes for as low as, I think, 415 Naira or 500. And if you should, okay, using my wedding as an example, my wedding, it, uh, small shops cost uh, was like about, I can't remember though, but at least we gave about over 500 people small shops. Now imagine 500 times 500 people, that's a lot of money. No matter how small, it's a lot of money. And then blogging. Blogging too is also a very good business. You can you have someone like Tunde Ednot, Insta Blog, Just Lover, and the rest of them. It's also a very good business. If you have um, followers that are over ten thousand, I think they're about complaint comes for you, and they pay you to advertise. You know, to advertise them on your page. So instead of you just wasting your data watching um, unnecessary stuff on Instagram, I think you can go into blogging. So. Um, every business also have um, advantage and um, disadvantages, you know. The advantage of 
owning a small business is independency. When we're talking about independency, you are, you are your own boss. You can't be fired. Most importantly, um, you have your own freedom. You know, you decide on what to do. You decide on when to get to work. You decide on when to close. And also, lifestyle. Only a small business gives you a certain lifestyle because you're in charge. You decide on when you want to work, where you want to work. You know, if you want to spend more time on working activities or you want to spend more time with your family, um, using today technology, you can work from anywhere. You know, you can be in your own and you're responding to clients because you own your own business. Financial reward, despite the high risk, the financial risk in every business, you know, you benefit from your own hand work, only your own business. You benefit from your own hand work. You, you dictate the price. So you're not just under someone and your boss is like, oh, this is the price you have to give to this client. No, you dictate your own price. So it gives you a lot of financial benefit. I used to tell people prices are relative. Prices are relative. I will give you, a, I would um, leak a secret today. There's a photo book I can do for an individual for about 150,000 uh, photo book. But the same photo book would cost a company 750,000 for me to produce for them. Trust me, it's the same photo book, but the client base, sorry, the client um, capacity differs. So as an entrepreneur, you detect your price. Okay, this is the amount I want to collect for this. So, you know, it comes with financial rewards and it also comes with some um, learning opportunities. You learn every day. I think I've given this story before and uh, I'll give it again. When I started photo app, I was a pro in graphics. So I started photography in Sao. So I met this guy, Samuel Tanui, where we went to um, a photography school before coming to Sao. Um, I went to, uh, sorry about that. Uh, he went to photography school before coming to Sao. So when he got to Sao, I was snapping on auto. I was using the camera to snap on auto. Then Samuel came on board. And uh, someone was like, no, Imano, you can do it this way. You can do it that way. You know, I collaborated with Sami and he was able to teach me more advanced technology and more advanced um, ways of using the camera, more advanced, um, how I put it, um, things in photography, basically. So, you know, it gives you learning opportunity. You, you learn from your mistake as an entrepreneur. You learn from your mistake. Then it also gives you creative freedom and personal satisfaction. For creatives, you'll be able to work in a field you really enjoy. Like, you know, like I said from the beginning, for you to start any business of your own, it has to do with your passion. So for you to actually thrive in any business, you must enjoy it. You'll be able to put your skills and knowledge to use, and you will use all, um, all personal gain, you know, for your satisfaction and implementing your ideas, the things you are thinking when you're sleeping, when, when you're alone meditating, you can actually implement these ideas, working directly with customers and watching your business succeed. Because over years, there is no way you're learning from your mistake, you wouldn't succeed. Trust me, you're going to succeed. Um, nevertheless, I'm not here to discourage you, but every, everything that has good also have the bad side. There are a few disadvantages of owning your own business, the financial risk. If you have a thousand naira and you put it into your business and you lose it, it's, you know, <laughs> you, it, it, it will take a long time to recover from that, you know. And also, the financial resources you need to start a business can be a major challenge. In Nigeria, capital is a very, very big um, problem in Nigeria for entrepreneurs to get capital. I started my photography and uh, I was able to raise capital from my mom, my uncles, and, you know, a few siblings. And, uh, you know, friends and family, actually, basically friends and family, but not everybody has that um, opportunity. So, you know, uh, you know, some people have to save. So, you know, getting that finances is also a very, very big challenge in starting your own business. Also, uh, as an entrepreneur, you can be overstressed, like you can be stressed out. As a business owner, you are the business. You are the business on your own. When you talk about Studio 92 today, I'm Studio 92. I carry it as a personal brand of myself. So every, every stress that comes with the business is definitely affecting me directly. No how it affects me directly. So I'm responsible for everything. When I send my workers out, either if, if they should do anything bad, they call me. 
even if I'm there or not, they call me. So it comes with its own stress. And also time commitment, you know, people often start business so they can, you know, have more time to spend with family for vacation. But unfortunately, running a business is extremely time consuming. You know, in theory, you know, you have all the freedom, but in reality, you may not be able to get away with it. In fact, you probably have less time to yourself. A client can call you in the middle of the night. You know, there's a correction for this thing. This job needs to be repeated tomorrow. You have to wake up and correct it. You know, so it's the commit. The time commitment is very, very. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot. Now I'll be talking about seed investments. How can you get funds um, for your business to start a business in Nigeria? We have a um, few banks that are willing to help start up um, individuals, but nevertheless, it's quite difficult. Most of, uh, most of my friends go for grants. Some of us go for crowdfunding. Some of us go for co-founding. Co-founding and that's uh, you know, having a partner. And also there's what they call um, angel investors. Angel investors, I'll, I'll, I'll break this down. Now, when we're talking about grants, Grant is an amount of money given to an individual or you know, a specific business for, for um, grants can come with, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember something. There was this grant you received from GEM. GEM is World Bank. Uh, a friend of mine actually received it for his own um, studio. The, uh, sorry, grant comes with some timeline. Some grants you, you end up paying back. They are just like loans. If anybody should give you grants, if an embassy gives you grants, they will definitely monitor your business, you know? So grants, is also, it's, it requires a lot of paperwork, you know? So it's not all about you just going to the embassy and like, oh, I want grants for my business. No, it requires a lot of paperwork. So I'm, I will list few, you know, few companies that can actually give you grants. We have um, Shell, there's um, Shell, um, I think they're in Lagos, Shell gives grants. We have um, the Ford Foundation. We also have Youth Employment in Agriculture pro um, agri um, Program. That's trending currently because um, the government is trying to channel a lot of the um, economic resources into agri. So a lot of people are getting a lot of um, agri um, fundings. And we also have crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is not really in use in Nigeria. Crowdfunding is when a lot of people come together to fund your business. Most people don't really use it in Nigeria for businesses like that. I'm sure you guys all know crowdfunding. Maybe you've heard of um, someone that could not pay his school fees. People raise um, crowdfunding links on Instagram, on um, Twitter. But actually, we can use this for business in Nigeria. Quite difficult anyways. Co-founding is the best. For me, co-founding is the best for me. Reason being that either you're having the idea or you're having the money. Then your partner is either bringing the idea or the money. So, and also you have to be careful of the kind of um, um, information you share with people. There's some people you give them your business breakdown and trust me, boom, they move away with your business ideas, they establish it and you just be there. So you have to trust who you are sharing your ideas with. I've had a lot of business with um, Adora, Anita, and um, you know, a couple of, of um, Isaac as well, Isaac Odubeson, yeah. You know, so we've shared a lot of um, business ideas and um, there are few people that I really trust when it comes to, you know, business. And um, investors, investors, investors are also good. You know, foreigners, people coming to invest in your business. But before I can invest in your business, you must have something on ground. I won't just bring my money and um, you want to start, you want to use my money for startup. No, I need to see your money, your business is ongoing. Then I bring my money to, you know, I invest my money in your business to grow your business and have a certain percentage of your business. So those are the few um, funding options we have in Nigeria. So before I move further, I will give a story about myself and importance of you know, having your own business. When I left um, Samadabega University, I went to Abuja. No, I went to Lagos. So just a brief story about myself. I went to Lagos. I was in Lagos for a week, rested for a week. Then I dusted, you know, my papers and everything, wrote my CV, just, you know, then 
I could not say I have BSc there because we've not done our convocation. So, but at least I was telling people I had um, BSc. So I started looking for jobs up and down. I was able to get a job in um, a studio. And that was where I learned, um, I developed myself, or oh, sorry, yes, I learned because it was like um, an um, intern process for me in photography. I was just doing little in, um, you know, in SAO, but when I got to the real world, I was able to like um, deal with a lot of gadgets, deal with a lot of lights, deal with a lot of customers, you know, studio works basically. And um, I was able to build myself. Then I went to, I went for my NYC in, in um, Abuja. While in Abuja, I continued my photography business. I, met, I went for an event in Transcopio team. I was snapping, that was where I met my current boss. So I don't know, it's, it's Grace, but I'd love to share the story. I met my current boss there and uh, he loved the pictures I took. He was like, okay, can you come to the embassy to take one or two pictures? I was like, okay, sir. That, then he was the deputy ambassador of UAE. So I went to the embassy, took some pictures, and I was like, oh, fine, cool. You know what? Uh, come on board. I would, love you to, I would love to have you as one of my staff. And that was how I got a job without doing any interview. I, I was able to get a job based on the skills I learned in school and outside the school. Because outside the school, people would say, no, I'm done reading. I'm done doing this. I just want to relax. No. If you're outside the school, you are learning more. Sincerely, outside the school, you actually learn more. People say on the streets. Yes, you learn more on the streets. You know? So that was how I was able to get a job. And I kept on developing myself. And um, still, I could not, you know, I could not drop them to the too. I kept on with my personal branding, kept on with my business. And you know, so that was how I've been able to like, you know, build my brand to today. Still. So today I'm still learning anyway, so it's not like I'm fully grown or fully established like that. No, I'm still learning to today. I still go for seminars. I still take um, courses on business and um, entrepreneurship um, conferences. So that's just um, the basic things that brought me or that's keeping me to today. And uh, I think I don't want to take much of your time because I was just a student like you, so I don't want to bore you with so many stories. So I, that's why I decided to keep it short. And I would love to have a um, discussion with everybody. So I want it to be like um, a conversational um, program. So I'll be entertaining some questions from you and I'll be entertaining ideas from you. So the floor is open to everybody. Please, does anyone ask a question? Please indicate by raising your hand up. Take like two or three questions. You have question. Please, does anybody have question? Indicate by please. Okay, Mr. Shag. Manuel. Yes, sir. I want to say thank you. You're welcome, okay. sir. Please, I will the question I want to ask is although you shared a bit of how you started from school to where you are now. But yeah. the students now may not think of going into business. It may be, okay. when, they leave, it may be when they leave school. So what, what are the things, challenges you have faced in starting your own business? You know, it's just, you can't just go to a, a company and get them um, welcome there immediately. What are the challenges one face in trying to get jobs? Even though now I have a business, okay. how, can I, how can I get work from clients? What are the challenges? What do I need to do? Be able to contact with others who are bidding for businesses okay. or jobs in different uh, organizations. Thank you. Okay. All right, Mr. Shagun, thank you so much for that. And um, number one, two things are involved. Do you mean get jobs as in four to five or get jobs like contract from Complaints, which one are we talking about? Like contracts. For instance, okay. I'm just Get giving an contract. instance. Maybe I'm yeah. a vendor, I'm an event planner, I cook, and I'm looking for clients. You know, definitely any company that wants to do an event, you have other people bidding for the job, like sure. a contract. So yeah. what will give me an edge, edge. 
over there. Yes, to be able to get those, such jobs and all that. And in, what's the secret behind it? What do I need to do to be able to get jobs? I mean, all right, so, all right, so I, I understand the question. Um, actually, the world now is a, you know, is a global market. And um, we ought to thank um, Instagram. I don't know, most of us are on Instagram. Instagram is a platform whereby you can advertise and sell yourself. There are just for, I'll take photography as an example, as you all know, I'm a photographer. Now, while I was in South, I was building my profile. As bad as my photography was then, I was building my profile, having creative um, shoots with different models. You all know Esther. Esther, Faber, Coppola, um, Debbie, they all contributed to my growth in the sense that while we were in school, we were, we were shooting and snapping, we were just taking pictures for the phone. But meanwhile, I was creating a profile for myself. Even after I left South, there was a project I worked on with Debbie. So I called Debbie. I was like, okay, you know what, Debbie, let's do, um, let's, you know, let's work on a project, which is called um, the Orange Project. I did it for um, GT Bank. It didn't fly a lot then because at the point of, you know, getting the gig with GT, I got my job at the embassy. So I had to, you know, weigh the two jobs and, you know, go for the best. But what I did then was that, when I, Debbie came on board, we did some free shoots in Abuja. I swear, uh, we, we did a shoot at City Gates. I'm sure most of them must have seen the picture one way or the other. This helped to create profile for myself. Uh, you create profile for yourself by doing pro bono. Whether you like it or not, you have to do pro bono. You have to do free jobs for people. You have to, you, people, I will not just come and say, okay, oh, you call yourself a photographer, yeah, come, and take, um, come and take my wedding and cover it. No. What are the jobs you've done before? You need profile. You need profile. So you need to create a profile for yourself. Wherever you go to, your profile will speak for you but before you even speak. So you need to be able to create profile for yourself. You need to be able to collaborate with people in the industry. You need to collaborate with people in the industry. So I think um, and Instagram is a very good platform where you can share your pictures, where you can share Whatever you are doing, either services, either product, you can share it on Instagram. It's one of the most reliable and the fastest means of people identifying or locating you wherever you are in the, in the world. So when you have all your profile, you have all your, all your portfolio put together on your websites, on Instagram, on you know, MySpace, anywhere, anywhere you think people can see it, trust me, people will definitely come for you. And another thing you should do is you have to be unique. You have to be unique. You know, when during my convocation in South, then the, I don't know what if that was the reason why they selected me, though, but there was something I sold to the school. The school used to do photo book. Then I told the school, you know what, instead of just doing photo book, why don't you let us do photo book and ebook? Now, it looks big, ebook, but trust me, just a very small thing. Ebook is just a compilation of your photo book in an electronic um, 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 device. So, you have the ad copy of your of the convocation um, photo book in the school, but those people outside the school can also access the um, photo book on their mobile devices. So if a normal photographer in um, Edo State comes to you and says, okay, Sal, please give me your convocation. I'll do a photo book and ebook, and sorry, photo book and frame for you. I would come and say, I'm doing a photo book and ebook for you. So you have an advantage for the same price. That's the ebook and the photo book. So when you are selling yourself to people, you should come up with a unique idea. Why should they select me? So you ask yourself the question before you leave the house. Why should they select me? So to, either you crash your price or you're offering something better. I think those are the two things, the two major factors in, in bidding for contract. Either you're crashing your price or you're offering something better for your uh, investors or w w um, employees to select you. Thank you. So do you have another question, please?
good morning, Mr. Emmanuel. Very quickly. Yeah, good morning. My question is on um, managing clients. Okay. How do you manage your clients? Because um, there are particular clients who would want to downplay your skill, what you know how to do. They, they tell you, okay, like somebody like me who do, does um, birthday surprises. You find people who tell you, is it not just to come and play parara? I will be charging this um, amount. So how do I manage this particular people? How do I sell myself? How do they see my what? It is, yeah, <laughs> it is quite difficult because most times they just downplay it and they make you feel like you don't know what you're doing. So how do I manage these people? How do they see my what? Thank you. All right, so managing clients. Managing clients is, um, it's quite, it, it, it's an easy task, number one. When your client, you need to have um, a feedback um, system whereby for the people you've worked for, you call them, okay, hope it. You know, when I design logo for people, oh, do you love this logo? How is it? Or when you take pictures, oh, madam, how are you doing? Hope you love this book, hope you love that, you know, stuff like that. Check up on your client. Um, if um, I cover your wedding, if I cover your wedding, there's a system put together recently. Your wedding date is... All right, sorry about that. So, as I was saying, not all, all clients are meant to be managed or are meant to be retained. Not all clients. It's not, um, you, okay, because of the payment you receive from them, but at the end of the day, your integrity matters a lot. I'm not, people might think, like, okay, maybe money is proud or not, but there are some jobs I don't take. There are some jobs I don't take. Um, when you come asking me for, you know, stressing me, beyond my limits. Quickly, I, I, rec I, I would recognize that you don't know the value of these things. I, I stay away from such clients. So not all clients are meant to be maintained because not all of them knows the value of what you're actually giving to them. You're doing surprise, um, you're doing surprise, uh, what do you call it? What did you say you do? You're into surprise, birthday surprises and stuff like that. You should know the kind of clients let me be sincere with you. I don't think it's all guys that most guys don't really like surprises. So it's your client base would mostly be ladies. So if definitely a guy is guys that will come and downplay you because they'll be like, oh, it's not just for you to come and blow and go away. No, but girls actually know the values of this thing because girls are actually carried away by the fantasy and uh, and by the moment. So you also need to select your clients very well. Not everybody are meant to be your client and not everybody are meant to be retained. Thank you very much for that, for tackling that. I believe your question has been answered. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Emmanuel. We are grateful. Yeah. For this. My name is Ajoke. And what I want to ask is, we have a lot of graduates who are scared of the world out there because we are often told that uh, the world out there is difficult. You know, we are just going there and we don't know what we are expecting but we are told things they are not easy. So a graduate who probably doesn't have any skill, you don't have any handwork you've learned before leaving school. And we know that when you go out there, it's difficult to get jobs. Mom and dad, you are not going to depend on them. In fact, our parents don't expect that after NYC, you still call them for feeding allowance and all of that also. So a graduate who is clueless, you know, you don't have anything you're hoping on when you go out there. What advice can you give such a person? Thank you. All right, sorry, before you go, Ajoke, please give Ajoke the microphone. I want to ask her a question, please. So, um, Ajoke, what do you love doing personally? Like, what do you enjoy doing on your own? 
Okay. <laughs> no, it's no, no, no. You know, it does. I'm asking, like, what do you love doing? Like, what do you enjoy doing without anybody forcing you? Don't tell me it's prayer, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I actually have a skill. I'm a tailor. I'm a fashion designer. But uh, I love singing and I love speaking. <laughs> you love singing and you love speaking. You know, frankly speaking, there's nobody in that room that don't have one or two things they can do without, you know, being forced to do it. Let's be realistic. And if, as at 2021, you don't know that you need to learn something before leaving school, then I think there's a problem somewhere. Sincerely, there's a problem somewhere. You can't just go to school and um, the only thing you focus on is book. Okay, if you focus on your book, then you come up and you can still continue doing your research. You can continue to, you know. Um, there's a all right. Sorry, you want to say something? Yes, yeah, I want to say something. Well, uh, as I said earlier on, I have an hand work. I have a hand work that I'm doing. I'm a fashion designer, but I, yeah, I, I know that. of people who left school without learning any skill whatsoever and okay what about people who are outside and they stayed they stayed uh probably three two years and the next thing they will tell you is there's no job in nigeria i'm a graduate and now i'm an okada writer and whatever and so on and so forth so i'm just asking for people yeah. who don't you don't have an hand work before you left school and getting a job outside here is difficult what do you think such people can do before you leave school, if you don't have anything you're doing, there's another, there's an opportunity again for you in NYC. Afalabi Joy can testify to that or graduate outside. It's called the Said program. The Said program is a program for entrepreneurs where you are taught on one ski or the other in NYC for a particular year. Sorry, did you get that? Said, like I think it's Said or S E A D, something like that. So it is skills acquisition program, compulsory for every core members. So if you don't learn anything in school, you definitely would learn something during your NYSC. And now people that are scared of the uh, outside world, whether you like it or not, you know, there's a saying that either you go to the mountain or the mountain comes to you, one of them. You can never be in school forever. You will definitely still come outside. You will definitely still come outside. So you have to be prepared for it academically or you are ready to use your skills. So things are involved. Thank you very much, sir. Please, I have two questions, actually. Yeah. My first question is, you're talking about funding your business, how to raise funds for your business. And the first thing you mentioned is grants. And you said grants had to do with a lot of paperwork. So my understanding, I feel writing a proposal. My question is, there are thousands of persons who are writing the same proposal to get the same grant. What are the things you indulge into your own to make your own stand out so you can get the grant? Then my, the second one, you spoke about co-funding. I really do not understand. Is it that you write, you have the idea, you said that maybe you have the idea and somebody has the money. What if I have the idea? Am I going to write to organizations that these are my ideas? I need funding. And my second question is, you, when you are speaking about yourself, I you said before you started, you actually learned graphics before yeah. coming to sell. My question now is, Somebody, I have the idea, I know how to do this thing, but I've not worked on that someone. Is it compulsory that I work on that person before I start up my own business? Thank you very much, sir. All right. Okay, so talking about um, raising funds. Number one, I was able to raise funds, you know, when I left school. I work with um, different organizations, not really, not a lot of organizations anyway. I work with a, um, a graphics company, sorry, um, a studio, a photo studio in Lagos. I was paid, I think, 20K or there about, so I was able to save little, you know. Um, when you have little money, you can be able to approach your family members. The best way to fund your business is by family and friends, but you don't go to your family and friends empty. So you don't just go and say, okay, Mommy and daddy, I need 100,000 to start my business. 
not all of us, not all of us have the luxury of having rich parents. No. So for like for my family now, before I can meet my parents for anything, you must have at least 50% of the money. So the best way to fund your business is by family and friends. And for grants, grants is it's not 100% certain. Grants and scholarship work hand in hand because you can request for grants and you, you might get it or you might not get it. So grants is not 100% certain. That's why I say this with a lot of paperwork. You keep writing and writing and writing. Now for co-funding, just like you said, Anita spoke to you guys yesterday. Anita is a creative writer. If I'm co-founding any business, if I want to start a business, okay, there's this business we started together, I and Anita, um, we started a business on um, writing statements, statements for students that want to go outside the country to study. So they need to, you need to submit, uh, I think, statement of purpose or something like that, I can't really remember. So I came up with the idea and I started looking for clients but I'm actually not the one doing the work. Anita is the one writing the statements. So that is what we call co-founding. Anita is, Anita is writing, but I'm bringing the clients. I'm sourcing for the clients. I'm pushing out the graphics work for the clients to see and to come to us. So that is co-founding. So it's not a, you don't need to like, um, you need to identify the people you want to work with. You don't just um, meet someone and say, okay, I want to work with you. No, what is the person bringing? So it, um, co-founding is more of like partnership. So let me just, re- let me use that time. It's more of like partnership. So you said another thing. So I'm trying to, okay. Do you have to work under someone before you stay on your own? No, you don't have to work under someone. No, you don't have to work under someone. But there's something that is very important for every entrepreneur. You must have a mentor that you look up to. You must have a mentor because no more is an island of knowledge. So you must have a mentor. You cannot do it on your own. You must have a mentor. You don't need to work under your mentor, but you must have someone that is putting you through. My mentor is Gabriel Adeyemo. Gabriel Adeyemo is a communication expert at the UN. He was able to put me through when I got into the old diplomatic sector. So you don't just get, you don't just dive into the pool and you're like, oh no, I know everything. Yeah, no. You must have a mentor. If you don't want to work under someone, but you must have a mentor that can put you through. That is very, very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also have a question. When you were mentioning, you talked about five things to consider when we want to start our own business. And you made mention of environment, but you did not emphasize on what the environment is to add or to take. So please, I really want you to talk about the environment as it is to do with starting your own lucrative business. Thank you. All right. Just like I said, when I was in SAO, when I started my graphics um, design, the environment played a major role because I realized that the student needed the graphic skills to be able to present their assignments. The student needed um, photography for their birthday shoots, you know, you know, birthday shoots, whatever they are doing. So that environment was conducive for my kind of business. So you need to know what the environment actually needs. If you go out now and um, you're in, okay, you're living in the, if you're living in an estate, in an estate, you hardly find um, malls, you hardly find, um, you know, um, um, all like shops and stuff like that. So in that kind of estate, you are there, you are living there, and you find it so difficult to get provisions and groceries for yourself. It's easier for you to establish a grocery business, go to the estate management, or I want to open a grocery store. And trust me, people patronize you. So you just need to identify a, key, a problem in an environment and ways to solve it. When there's a problem and you have ways to solve it, trust me, people will definitely come for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Please, any question? Any more questions, please? Okay. Okay. Good morning. 
Good morning, sir. My Mr. Brother, Falabi. How yeah, how are you? I'm fine. Long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to first of all thank Dr. Ijala for this kind of um, great program that he organized because since 2015, this is the force of his kind. And I want to say it because it is the best thing that will happen to the 400 level students. The world of theory and the world of practical, they have link, but they also are separate words. Yeah. And uh, my friend, Mr. Ajayi, for doing a good job and all the people that have really worked. And I also want to thank you for one thing. And Anita, Bessie, and uh, Ubong has emphasized, we should really emphasize that the university has really given you a better platform to become who you are today. And apart from the university patronize you, even individually, we also patronize you. My question is that, what is your advice to the school? Because looking at the entrepreneur in most of the schools has to do with theoretical aspects. Some of the practical may not be uh, too deep. How do you advise the university, um, especially student affairs, using the entrepreneurial platform now to project people that will be CEO tomorrow so that we can have people as CEO of their own business all over the world? How do we, do you advise, what do you see outside that you think we are not really considering. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Falabi. And um, for the record, Mr. Falabi is, is, one, of, is one of my school father. <laughs> All right, so. People like um, Christina Singbo, I think Christina Singbo um, deals with um, ways. Someone like um, Joel, Joel deals with clothes to come and exhibit their products in school. While exhibiting their products, they'll be able to share and uh, um, give students first-hand experience on how they deal with the outside world. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So the school should um, give room for entrepreneurship um, you know, um, conference, conference, workshop, and seminars, just something like this, something like this. And the school should also pay more um, attention to, on um, GST, entrepreneurship um, class. I can't remember the GST code, but the school should pay more attention on that. If possible, the school can come up with grants for students because when money is the major, fa major factor, major motivation factor for any business person, if the school should give opportunity for grants for students to start up their business, trust me, you will be amazed on, on the kind of ideas you will hear from students because most students have these ideas, but they don't have the um, finances to execute it. So if the school should pay attention on entrepreneurship and give opportunities for grants and their mentorship classes, trust me, a lot of ideas will come out of the school. A lot, a lot of ideas will come out of the school. I have, I have a lot of friends from Covenant Universities, I have friends from Bowen Universities, and they are doing good outside. And they got most of this from inside, inside the school. All right, thank you very much for tackling that question very well. 
And now we'll be welcoming the Dean. We miss two things. I miss two things. I miss your wedding date. Uh, <laughs> my my yes, phone sir. had a problem. You will notice yeah. I wasn't following you up uh, for a long while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Regularly, I, I noticed that. I lost sir. your contact. So, but I will get. I will get it back now. But I will cut you up after now, sir. All right, that's beautiful. Thanks so very yes, much sir. for coming on board today. We really appreciate this. Um, I will want you to talk about one thing. You, right, you are working with uh, United Arab Emirates Embassy. Yes, sir. And you are running a studio. Yes, sir. How do you do the collabo? You know, that's a lot of energy. That is a lot of time. And yeah. what do make you, uh, because, you know, having a business is good. And you know that starting a business requires a lot of concentration undivided attention so that it can grow and become something. So how did you do it that you were able to, you know, ramble between the business and also working and flying everywhere with the Arabs? Okay. <laughs> to answer. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir, Dr. Jala, for that. Um, I think I'm quite privileged or, yeah, Grace. Grace uh, found me because the kind of um, work I do at the embassy is also similar to the kind of job I do outside, which is to the 92. So I'm still the media analyst to the ambassador. And um, most clients, funny enough, everywhere I go to with the ambassador, I sell myself, not just as Emmanuel, but I sell my brand as to 92 to everybody. So, most of my boss friends, or most of the ambassadors around, are also similarly two clients because I sell myself. And another thing I did before entering the, uni uh, entering the embassy fully was while, uh, okay, immediately I left so after NYSC. Yes, immediately after NYSC, we started training people. We started training people. I and my partners. Michael, Joe, Anita, and the rest of us, we started training people. I started training people on graphics, photography, and uh, you know everything I do basically. So now one of my guy, one of my staff is online, David Balogun. So what I did then was that I was able to train people, and I was able to develop developed a lot of um, ideas just as I have in them. I was able to pass the knowledge to them. And um, even when I'm sleeping, I can easily say, okay, you know what? David Balogun will go and cover this event and he'll cover it successfully and he will come back because I've been able to transfer the same thing I do to him. And um, another thing is that um, photography, media, media is very, very flexible. You can work from anywhere, anywhere. You can monitor your event from anywhere, you know? I'm at the office. I'm I'm at the office at the that mean at the embassy, and I have my staff maybe covering a job. I can easily monitor them via WhatsApp, Zoom, or you know, any all all social, using all social media uh, platform. I monitor everything that is going on. So by that way, I'm able to like uh, manage the tool. And also for the clients, I have my weekends to myself. Yeah, so I'm going to work Monday to Friday. Days that I'm available, I have my weekend to myself. I'm able to cover the um, events that are available for Sunday too, weekends for myself. And I also get to see my clients as well. So, I, you know, it's not easy, but, you know, at the end of the day, you just have to, like, strike balance between um, um, both jobs. During the day, I'm with the UAE. During the night, I'm editing pictures. I'm editing videos. So it's, 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 it's a lot of work. It's not easy. So I wouldn't say it's easy, so it's a lot of work. So that's how I'm able to manage the two um, organizations. Sorry, I can't hear you, sir. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yeah, I can hear you, sir. Thank you so very much. Uh, well, we are... 
sorry, I can't hear you again. Sorry. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's quite slow. Thank you so very much. I think you can, can hear, hear you now, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Um, we are doing our best as a university. I'm saying this because I observe that um, some of our big alumni are on the Zoom already. Uh, Christy Singh yeah. is there. She's yet to make me a shoe. And um, Otito is already hanging somewhere. He just delivered for one of my committees in the university a set of well-designed ideas yeah. for our admission mobilization. And that is to tell you that we would like to patronize our alumni. I'm actually looking for the size of shoe that Singo will do for me. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> um, and uh, but you are still holding me a complimentary card. I didn't forget. It's about two years now, Emmanuel. So all right, no problem, sir. You ask me to we'll pay five thousand. You ask me to pay five thousand. Then I, I don't know how much I will pay now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we just, well, sir, we'll get it done, sir. I, I observe that um, the president, alumni association, Isaac, could do yes. best on, yeah. also on Zoom. We are, we are going to give him a time uh, to make comments uh, before we round up today. And uh, sincerely speaking, the two ideas you just uh, shared with us about the entrepreneurship stuff and uh, the student grant, I'm tell, promising you within the short time. I have in the Student Affairs Division, we will try and work on it. And uh, perhaps, perhaps you will be one of the speakers for that uh, event, uh, by the grace okay. of God. Since you are now a malam, you could see. <laughs> so thanks so very much, and uh, God bless you and your family. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Sorry, I can't hear you, Mr. Ashagun. I can't hear you, sorry. I can't hear you, Mr. Ashagun. I said. Thank you very much for coming on board. You're welcome, sir. I hope when we'll call again, you will answer us. Definitely, sir. Thank you very much. Please, let's give a hand of applause for Studio 92. Thank you very much. Please still hang in there. We are having another session. Very shortly, right. Singbo Christy will be coming on board to have another segment too, in the seminar. Thank you very much. Okay, sorry, please. He said, Isaac, I, please, Isaac, if you are listening to me, please, we we'll want comments from you, please. I want to welcome you to the Zoom meeting. That's the alumni president in person of Isaac Odubeson. So thank you very much, Isaac, for coming on board. I really appreciate this. You know, we have been trying to work on this. Uh, and I, I will be glad to hear from you. Thank you. Yes. Good morning, everybody. I don't know if you can hear me. All right, loud and clear. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Good morning to the dean. Um, Mr. Folabi, Mr. Shego, Mr. Folabi, I see you, sir. Thank you so very much for all the years of wisdom. To the Dean, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate you for this initiative, Mr. Shego. Uh, Mr. Shego, I was going to return your missed call, just so that we're clear, before you, you finish me after this. Um, thank you, Emmanuel. Um, um, I... I'm really excited that stuff like this is happening. I just wanted to say that um, it's imperative that we take this thing seriously. And um, as a business or as running a business in Nigeria can be a bit, you know, here and there, regardless of all the necessary skills or value that you tend to, uh, that you're trying to give. Uh, but more importantly, I want to say that in running a business, there are two things you need to know how to do. I run a business for myself, and I'm a full-time business person. And I'm also a graduate of um, computer science from South Madrigal University as first degree. And I'm running my MBA somewhere now. But in between, what I have learned from business would be that there are two things you need to know how to do whilst running the business. Is that you are 
is either you know how to sell or you know how to build, very importantly. If you can build, partner with those that can sell, with somebody that can sell. And if you can sell, partner with somebody that can build, which is what I think has been emphasizing on. And it's called collaboration, you know. I also want to say that um, to get money is to provide value, regardless of what kind of skill that you have. If you're able to, you know, provide value, you know, high standard, you would surely get customers. And, you know, I was listening to the questions that um, they were asking, you know, somebody asked about managing clients. So getting clients and managing clients are two different things. Yeah. More importantly, if you can sell, you will get clients. That's the truth. And if you cannot sell, partner with someone that can sell, you will get clients. Now, managing clients is the same thing as managing people. If you can manage people, you can enjoy life. And if you can manage people, you can manage clients. You know, part of the tips I think has given also. Um, collaboration also is very, very key. It's very important that we you collaborate, which means that you have friends now. Do not despise the little beginnings that you have. And I think Belu has collaborated in the past, we're collaborating currently. As a matter of fact, we still collaborated yesterday on a conversation. Um, but very importantly, learn how to collaborate. Don't, don't be in competition with anybody. That's the truth. You, you can be, they have been great entrepreneurs before you were born, they will be after you go. The best you can do, and this is a thing that Africans need to take hold of. We are always in competition with each other. But if we can collaborate, we would achieve great things, you know, for ourselves. Um, yeah, and, and that's, that's, that's pretty much it. The fact that we need to, then you have to also be an unrepentant optimist. They, some days are better than others. I can, I can give you for a fact. Some days are really better than others, you know, but you have to keep going. Up until yesterday, I'm pursuing something that I've not gotten feedback and I was so tensed about it. But I told myself that you have to keep going, Isaac, which is what I'll tell you this morning or this afternoon. You have to keep going, regardless of what challenges that you face. You have to keep going, you know. So that's 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 my that's the bit for me. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Mr. Isaac, thank you very much. Really appreciate your presence here. Thank you very much for coming on board. Okay. So right away. Please just give us like five minutes. Five minutes is not to step out. You can just stretch your leg within the hall. We just want to have um, like five minutes break before we have the next session. The media team are trying to work on we going live on Facebook so that other people can also uh, view us. Please, thank you very much. You can just move around. I didn't say go out, move around. You didn't hear, not go out. Thank you. So, and thanks to all the student committee, the student um, departments of the school. Thank you for invest, inviting me. The privilege is, wasn't taken for granted. Thank you very much. So are we ready for our discussion this morning? Yes. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we ready? Thank you. So I'll be talking on talent development. I'll be sharing my screen. I have a screen to share. Come in, talent development. Okay. I'm coming. So what is talent? Sorry, I'm trying to share my screen. Oh.
I can't even see. Let to share my screen because I'm not using my laptop actually. I'm out of the house. So let me just take it manually instead of sharing it because I'm out of my house and out of the office. I'm not home. Okay. We'll be talking on talent development. Talking on talent development. And okay, thank you. What is talent? I hope we all have ideas on what talent is. And we all have what we think that talent and passion is. Yeah, they are two different things. But people don't think about but they don't think about the talent. They take more of passion. I'll be talking about talent development. First, talent is defined as my laptop. Okay. Yeah. So now I can go. Sorry. So I'm talking about that and development. Talent is defined as a unique characteristic of an individual, something that you are unique at doing. Can you hear me, please? Yes. Okay, thank you. What you, are, what you can do in a nice way, in a comfortable way, without someone stressing you, that's what talent is. And it's often mingled with your ability and your skills. Double mingled with ability and your skills. And a quote says by Emma Bommek says, When I stand before God at the end of my life, I hope that I will not have a single bit of talent left and could say, I use everything you gave me. Now, going back, we are in a faith based university. Now, going back to the Bible, we all know about what um, the story of the talent that their, their master went away giving some people five coins, three, two, and one. The wisest person used it to invest, we invested it. So when having talent, you have to reinvest it. Talent deals with investment and it shows how can we emphasize, how can we explain how we've used our talent. If you're a singer, can you sing well? If you're a, drama, if you're a um, writer, do you write well? Do you use your talent to the extreme? So today I'll be taking you just a brief thing on what we should do in developing our talent. And I'm a, as an entrepreneur, talent works with you. So I'll be taking more of talent development and less of entrepreneur. So we, um, we all know that an amateur, before you can become a professional, you start as a learner, as an amateur. So we have some steps to know on how to develop our, our talents. One, you have to discover and come to the consciousness. You have to discover your talent. Before I decided of going into shoemaking, um, growing up, my mom was a teacher and a, a caterer. And she learned tailoring, so that's fashion designing. So, you know, growing up, you have to press the machine and can do chitching at home on normal thing, just perform, just snacks at home to, to enjoy your life. But growing up, I say I don't find interest in making chitching, making snacks or sewing clothes. So then I changed my, so I changed my, my, my focus, learn going to secondary school. The first time I knew I had an idea about shoes when we are going, you know, when you're working with guys in your secondary school, and maybe you're working and your shoe cut off. I tried sorting, solving, looking for a way of sort, sort, sorting their problem, of sort, finding a solution to it. I started trying to mend their shoes as a lady. But later, I found interest in. Um, bead making, but my daddy called me. Said, "Come, learning this, learning that won't improve your skills. What do you want to do?" I said, "I want to learn bead. I learned bead. During my after my, I learned bead that I sold to my friends. Kioda, Kioda that you make with beads. I sold it then hundred naira. 
So most of us don't have Kyoda. So when I, I brought my beats to school, then at my, at, my leisure, at my leisure, I make some beats and give, because I don't wear beats, I don't just like it. So I don't, I just do pause, belts and key orders. So when I'm start discovering, I said, I still find fa- passion in shoe. But whenever I go to the market, I try to examine the shoe I want to get. And when someone walks up to me, the first thing I look at is your footwear, personally. I won't even look at your, I will first try your footwear, try to analyze your footwear, how it looks like, maybe it's like a Jonah shoe or Jesus shoe, try to analyze it. But coming, in, coming out of it, after NYC, no, during my NYC days, we were told to do, there's this skills, accusation, and entrepreneurship development, that's Said in NYC, that's what we were to um, yeah, It's a compulsory thing to do. You have to join a skilled as, accusation um, part. So I had to join BID. But I had a private class in shoemaking. Same on my um, on the camp doing NYC. I sat in Delta. Yeah. So um, what was the name of this place? Um, that I served our camp. Self, one village. I should have served in Delta. So during then I paid I paid fifteen thousand naira extra so I can learn shoes. Then my boss was teaching us um, fabrics, wrap shoes and everything. But I said, okay. I can't do this because I love male. I love looking at males. I love um, attending to male people. So I'm still talking about discovering your talent. So I sat down, it's okay. Doing ladies' footwear is more stressful, but doing male footwear is less of stress and you can find just less people doing those kind of stuff. But after I'm doing my rights, I went to Onisha, start bordering from Onisha, learning footwear in Onisha, learning another one in Asaba, then learning bag. So after relocating from my wife, I mean, I'm done with my wife, I served in the ministry, so there was time for me to relax. I, I enjoyed my YC days, but I made it busier for me because I tried to learn a skill. When my, I, and I attended some courses online too. After my NYC, I got to, I told my daddy, daddy, I want to learn shoemaking. My daddy said, oh, why do you want to learn it? I was residing at Ojoala by Lagos. And where I can learn shoemaking is like one hour to my house. And I'm to pay 100,000 Naira to learn. I told my daddy, I said, dad, I don't have money. And I want to learn. He said, okay. I was sponsored. He sponsored me. And I started making my footwears. And fortunately, my boss was a lady. And that gave me another entrance. And learning, and that's why I started loving footwear. That's why I started. That's that's why I discovered that I love footwear. I love making things of footwear. I make I make majors for, majorly for male. I don't do I do less of female, but major for male. So I've come to the consciousness that okay, when you are finding something doing and you're enjoying it, that's your talent. You know you are not forced to do it. You enjoy what you do. And the second one is be intentional about your growth. And don't let the growth, it was not easy starting as an entrepreneur. Talent is not easy to build. Once you find discouragement, there are some times that you now have sales. Okay, as, an, as, a, as a footwear, as a, as a shoemaker, there's sometimes that during rainy season, you don't find much sales. And your sales, your production level is always low because of the weather. We need more of sun and we need more of sun and more of light, and fire or something or something light. But you know, the weather will be cold and mild and it takes a longer process. You have to be very careful where you don't have to get discouraged. Be intentional about your growth. And if you are, as I was doing my shoemaking business, I was already going for a postgraduate student, uh, postgraduate course. I attended a postgraduate course in 2018. I go weekends. So shoe, weekends, I don't, I don't go to workshops, but during the week, I go to workshop. So I tried to engage myself. It wasn't that, it's not that I wasn't, I was not gainfully employed. I was employed, I worked with for FCMB. But I see that oh, this banking is too stressful. You have touches to meet. And though I studied economics, I know it's, that's my line, but I wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't enjoying it. But I find more joy in making my business, in building a business. Do I still have time to read and study more? So when you, have, when you are intentional about your growth, 
Don't let your talent disrupt your education or your course of study. When you are passionate about studying more, going for a postgraduate, or even if I don't even want to go for a postgraduate course, you might want to go for a master's course. So you go for a postgraduate course because I wanted to have a foundation in um, education. So it's not that I don't have, I have, um, I graduated with a two one in second class upper. So I can easily apply to the university for masters, but I wanted something on, on education because I'm doing more of education, you teaching people how to make food to as part of education. So I wanted a course on education. That's why I attended the postgraduate um, program in 2018. And that does not disturb my talent. So there's a cross point. They meet together. So they work hand in hand. So if you have your growth and you are managing your course of study, it works hand in hand. So I encourage people from more and from little, you enjoy yourself um your talent when i was in gs3 after my gs3 um exam my, my parents enrolled me in a computer school so i found it easier even when i was in school to work on computer the project i type projects for most of my friends i run their data for them and it was easy to um improve my talent so from the idea of your computer Use this for your shoe making because you, you, you do some, you sketch some designs. Not design, not all designs you, you download online. I sketch some. I haven't tell my clients bring some designs. Bring I bring your design. I don't, give, I don't dictate designs for my clients. But when you bring your designs, I will know how to build on it with the use of technology. So you don't allow your course of study affect your, your talent. I don't allow your talent affect your course of study. So the third one is the route is not permanent. You just have to, to push. I remember Prof, um, Dr. Ola, Kende Ola, one of our lecturers in economics, one of our lecturers in economics, he said, the road is not smooth. You just have to keep pushing. And Professor Hai Gorai, our former vice chancellor, also told us that may your road, not be, may your road be rough. It's a course and it's also a, it's not a course and it's not a prayer, but that's a real fact. Within five years, I can say my roles are doing well. No, it's only Dr. Jalak that can understand the issue about it, but it was not easy. But you keep pushing, you keep smiling, you keep attending to people, and keep encouraging yourself. And there's a little there's something that um, Bishop um, TG um, TD Jake says said that. Celebrate your little wins. So after your, you have to give yourself a, a, a treat, special treat, because you are developing your talent and you have to encourage yourself in it. There will be discouragement. Yes, there will. But you just have to encourage yourself. Are you following in, please? Can we hear me? All right. So now, we are going to, I've spoken about steps to develop our talents, and I'm talk, talking about ways to develop our talents. The major and the important way is why. W-H-Y. Why. The word why. The word why. You have to formulate your why. Before you want to go, before you want to study a course, you have to say, okay, why do you want to study this course? For example, if I want to eat, I said, okay, what do you want to eat? Why do I want to eat this food? From later, why? That why will keep pushing you, even when you are try, try, when you try relenting, your why. Why do you do what you are doing? Why are you studying, your, why are you studying economics? Why are you sleeping? Why are you singing? Why? Listen to more, see, motivational speakers, they have many things to tell you. Oh, to aspire to, aspire to require or something, something. It's not, it's not, the same the way the the way it is in real life when well, it's good is it's good to listen to most speakers fine i'm not disputing that but you have to explain your own concept sit down know your own meaning sit down and try to analyze strategize have your i listen to um Akipelu's, um speech he has said major things because you have to start from a little beginning. 
People will not know when it's rose leaves. That's when people will know you. When you start struggling, your sleepless night, how you have a dick on your customers, you, they will not know that. But you know, you, I have to sit down and strategy, make a strategy of how to push yourself forward, your why. Just formulate your why. And the major one is um, knowing your purpose. Your purpose matters. What's the purpose? And the, some questions you have to ask yourself is, why do you sing? If you're a singer, why do you sing? If you're a writer, why do you write? If you're a comedian, why do you make people laugh? If you're an actor, why do you act? Ask yourself every question, I, I, these questions every morning. Why do you want to do this? And make sure you, you have answers to it. And these questions will lay a solid foundation for you to pursue your growth and development. We will lay a foundation for you to pursue improvement. The thing is, I've been, I got, I, I got to a stage that there was a time I was fed up. I said, oh, I don't want to be a shoemaker again. So people call me shoe cobbler. I said, no, I'm not a shoe cobbler. The shoe cobbler, I pop up those are book. I'm a shoemaker. I make shoe from scratch. But I keep, sometimes I say, let me just relate. But I sit, I sit down. My brother will say, sister, why did you start? I said, okay. I start because I start giving him reasons. Said then your reasons are genuine. I I keep pushing myself. So God's glory. I don't have much um, people I train, and I don't have like I'm not going to the top. But the little ones, at least I I'm working to. I, I work with some government of officials training. So I work with some government of officials that they even help and encourage us. So why? That why, that word why, that three-letter three letter word is important. Why do you start it? And that will increase your focus. It will help your focus that when you are trying to relearn, there will be strength. This strength from within comes. And there, it will push you when there's setbacks and obstacles. So you, don't, you have to face them to be sure of your why. So why? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? So the second one is you have to find your required technique. Which technique do you want to use? What's it? Which technique? Figure out what you need to learn. Fine. I love shoemaking, but I still have to go to school to learn it. I have to go to school. I have to go for interview. I even went to this letter. There's this letter fair in Lagos, and there's letter letter fair that is that that. They organize every year in Lagos. In VI, it's a three day letter fair that you meet with Tara Di Otoye, you meet with um, people, um, people that she is about leather. You know, I work, I do leather works. So, those who I still have, we still talk, we are in a group, those who import leather from, um, from Italy, you know, the pomo you eat serve is leather. So, I get angry seeing people eating pomo. I say, yeah, this, you are making leather more costly for us, I'm making material costly. So these, um, those kind of seminars, those kind of um, interview, um, trainings you go to, helps you to know your required technique. You need to learn what you, you are doing in order to um, take your talent to the next level. What are the techniques you need to know? It will, it will enable you to improve your talent. So, Doing some of your crafts, if you are if you are a, a fashion, um, if you are into fashion, you know, shoemaking is into fashion is a fashionable one too. Shoemaking is into fashion. Yes, shoemaking is fashion. We have tailoring. We have um, um anything that talks about you looking good is fashion. So, what do you do that improves your crafts? What that? What which research have you made? When new styles come out, you try. Practicing it using a scuff, a, a rough um, material. Practicing it. What are the studies? You know, you have you have booths in, in, in abroad. They don't. Um, you have companies that make. They have machines that make the footwear. But in Nigeria, here in Nigeria, we use our hands because the machines are costly. So, how do you learn? Do you, if you have a machine, there's a time I, I, I got to a place that they have a, 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 they use the machine. I, I was able to use the little bit, even though not perfect. But because I had an idea on it. 
So let's take it. Let's take for example, if you have a talented dancer. You want know people that dance the coffee. You know, coffee is popular. You have people that dance. She finds out she learns new skills in her dancing. If it's um, this one, they, they do like someone that is eating food. You learn new skills. You learn dancing, new dancing steps. So she won't be outdated. So you have to learn your, improve your learning and your talent. Your talent, I'm talking about talent. Your talent should be improved. It should be like the wisest um, servant that the talent gave coins that we invested it. God gives us talent. God gives us talent. And everyone has to discover is our talent. Don't say because my friend loves writing, let me be a writer. No. I, I write a little bit, but it's not my passion. It's not my talent. Everyone writes. You don't sit down and just say, okay, come. Everybody's a motivational speaker. But you just have to know how to figure out your own talent. And the funny thing is, going to be jack of all trades. You can't be jack of all trades. People that are dead are entrepreneurs. Some are, um, are not entrepreneurs. But you just have, if you're an entrepreneur, you have to push it. Because it's not easy. There's competition. But when there's competition, the cloud is wide to accommodate everybody. So you just have to distinct yourself. Make yourself distinct in what you're doing. And when you try to improve your craft, you see, you stand out. You stand out in, um, in your selected field. You stand out in it. But the third one is, you know your strength and weakness. You know your SWOT analysis. That's what you have the strength, the weakness, the opportunities, and the threat. You have to take every business person as to analyze his or her SWOTs. These are our strengths. We all know our strengths. We all know our weakness. We all know our threat. And we all know our opportunities. I think I have spoken some of them, given us some of the opportunities we might have. Meeting people. I don't work without having my complimentary card in my hand. I'm just, okay, hello. I love you. Can I do a try? I don't try as to people. For people, they see there is a time that you have to put your money. You don't have any profits. You have to put your Just a try. Let us see what you can do. You have to make your strength, your strength, emphasize more your strength. And they say we were having more than two people in a competition. You have to make that person's weakness your strength. Try to build on your weakness. Your weakness can be built on. So you have your strength, your opportunity, every little opportunity you see, take it up. Each opportunity you see, take it up. Don't have to, you don't have to disturb you don't have to disturb someone because you have a little opportunity. Every of the opportunity comes but once, once. And every missed opportunity can be missed for life. Every little missed opportunity can be done for life. So you have to make use of any opportunity that comes your way. You have to do volunteering jobs. The training I did in 2019 for, for female, female science students, was an opportunity. It was a referrer. It was a referrer. Someone referred me to them. And we have over 400 students. It was held in Lagos, around Bega, um, around um, Bariga. It was right in Lagos. So it was a referrer. So you have to make use of all opportunities that you have. Then the fourth one is take constructive advice and don't ask for permission. We have different kinds of criticism. Some people are so strict in criticizing you. Don't get angry. It's for, your better, it's for, for the betterment of your, of your talent. You might make it, you might write a book now, someone says, this book is even bad. They will, dis, they will, they will, they will even destroy your, your, your focus. I mean, the, all the strength. You think, okay, what I've stressed myself doing? Someone is criticizing me. Accept it. Smiles, smile. I said it with smiles. Be happy. They say customers are it always right. Yes, they are. Sometimes I've met with customers that say, "Oh, Christy, what you did for me this is not what I wanted," and that's what is sent. You know what I wanted, you not do it well, and this that all this kind of talk. But you just have to. I'm sorry. Can I? Can you give me an opportunity to try again? And you keep failing. You keep trying. 
you don't have to win if you don't if you don't struggle you have a success story success story story deals with struggle you have to okay these i'm struggling we all know that okay you are struggling to pass your exams you read you burn kind you burn light you burn your time to watch movies but you have to try um try um struggling to attend to people you have to be um, you have to be calm. You have to be patient. You have to be patient because you have different temperament issues. You have to be patient. You have to read books, not just sitting down and say, okay, this is all. No, you have to read books on business. There are a lot of business books. There are a lot of um, books that I, I try to read a book, at least a book a month. Just find time, read, build yourself and take constructive advice. Not all books are good to read but when you're in a line of business line you have to take something on it don't ask for permission before you do something when you're working on your talent stand on it this is what i want to do fine this is how we make it fine don't ask for permission from people before you do what you what you know it's right for you to do concerning your talent the first one is do the work the work of building your talent. You have a little, major work to do. Rome is not built in a day. You have the major work to do. So you have to do the work of building your talent. When you build your talent, it helps you. When you are doing the work, it helps you building your talent in a, in a, in a nice way. Making a footwear. If I want to make a palm, let's say for a, a palm, a male palm, I'll say, okay, two days to make it normally, or maximum of three days. But when I'm talking to my client, I tell them within two weeks, or not before your two weeks, you get your foot away. Because there are some times when I break down and I have work to do. Your personal work will be there. Your family work issues will be there. Your personal work will be there. Some other things will be there. And you have your client. And you don't have to disappoint your clients and family. So you have to do the work of following them or of, of giving them time frame. You don't say, okay, because you can do it in a day. Uh, you collect it that same. No. There are some things that you do, um, unforeseen circumstances that happen. Sometimes I'll be going, I might have a call, and you have to find a way of structuring yourself. But you have a timeline. Do the work and get do it perfectly. Everything you do should be perfect. Everything you try doing, do it in a perfect, do it with a happy heart, a merry soul. That's what you should do with the work of your talent, you use your talent for. Then the last one, find time to rest and celebrate your progress. Rest, celebrate your progress. Give yourself a nice treat. You don't need, you don't need to you don't need to buy the old world before you give yourself a nice treat. You can buy just sausage on red naira and um, biggie cola 150. Think on red naira, you're giving yourself a nice treat. Just find I'll go to a eatery, order for something within minimum of 1,000 naira. You've enjoyed yourself. Celebrate yourself. As I said earlier that Bishop T.D. Um, T. Jake said, when you celebrate your success, big or small, it's not when you become a third dollar that you start celebrating yourself. You encourage, your, you encourage yourself to do it more. The little, this little success now will be a big win later. You start once. So celebrate yourself and increase the way you, you do your thing. Increase the way you rest. I don't say you should sleep. No. A little sleep. Bible says a little sleep, a little slumber. So I don't say you should start sleeping. No. Just rest. Because our body needs rest. So no matter how busy you are, find time to rest. Find time to celebrate yourself. Find time to make use of your talent. Every time I wake up in the morning, after having my devotion, I just say, God, what, what, what do I want to do? I have my plans for the week. That's why I tell my friends, jokingly, you can't just tell me, Christy, come here. I won't answer you. When you want to invite me over for something, you invite me ahead. You tell me ahead because I don't have time. So if I'm going for a friend's wedding, you tell me ahead. Christy, I'm having my wedding next month. Will you be available? I'll tell you that yes or no. You should have a plan. Plan yourself. You should have um, a schedule for each day, for each week, and for each month. This is October. What do I want to achieve in October? You don't have to overstress yourself. They said, okay, January, 
you make um new year resolution okay the new year resolution you are making are you following so it's not about you making okay i want to do this i want to do that but you have to plan yourself if you fail to plan you plan if you fail to plan you plan to fail so you have to make yourself available for things to improve your talent talent is so important god will ask us even our parents will ask us. you ask yourself every night ask myself what am i achieved today am i able to attend to my am i able to utilize my talent well every day we have new things new ideas coming in you should have your time for personal reasoning personal um let me say your quiet time it's not necessary your quiet time it should be kaboshing or praying 24 hours your quiet time should, should be time you have to reason what do i want to do what next what next uh, what's the next step what do i want to do and how will i improve on others weakness i know my weakness this is my weakness okay summer about a, a brand or a, a let's say a shoe delivered just set an alarm okay i want to follow up with this customer send a text message i hardly call my customers i just send them a text message oh your your uh, your product is ready for delivery and everything sometimes when you need a clarification you, you send a message and you give a call but they're not all calls. I work with people that are um, working class people, so you don't know when they're available or not. So you just have to follow up your talents. And people are around you to build your talent, the kind of friends you build, you build your talents. Either you build it or they reduce it. So you select your friends. Not all friends are meant to have. I don't have a close friend. Even um, Beth Soloide was um, is one of my classmates, was one of my classmates. She's my sister, actually. We have a bond, so she's my sister. She's my friend. But there's something I call a close cycle. My close circle are people that I see, okay, they are my mentors. They are people that can encourage me, encourage me even when I'm feeling down. We are human. We get tired. So select your friend. Otito is my brother. The next guy is my brother. We talk a while. And even when we're doing entrepreneurship skills, uh, uh, and Dr. And Mr. Volabi is that was one of my tutors. So we all I have this. You should have a relationship with people that can even encourage you. Try to keep a communication skills. Try to update each other with your friends. Okay, this is what I want to do. Not only it's not only people um, that uh, someone in shoemaking that I follow. Even on my Instagram, because I follow those who make words. I follow people that I see. Okay, there are some ideas. That they come. Not all motivational speakers um, say something that is um, to the real world. But in a way, little beginning matters. You just keep pushing doing do it well with your own art try to improve your talent god will ask you you will ask yourself god put a talent in us try to discover it even if you've not discovered it it's not too late to discover your talent you can be you, you find if you see you find something doing that with ease if you enjoy doing it that's how you can enjoy your talents more so find a way of improving your talent. Listen to TED Talks. I listen to Anita, one of the tech, uh, tech, uh, no, tech Talks, T-E-D, one of the tech, uh, TED Talks she had. Listen to interviews. There's this, there's this program I watch on, um, I've, um, on DSTV, I think Channel 2, every Sunday, I'm talking about um, entrepreneurs. This year, um, I year, African youth entrepreneurs. I, I have a friend that went for it. She was qualified. She, she did beat. She made beats. They give you funds. They give you, um, they interview you. They ask you questions. Listen, watch programs. Not only African Magic Yoruba. I don't watch Yoruba movies. I don't even like it. It's scary. Watch interviews. 
try to, when you have your subscription, browse on things that is beneficial to your talent, to you. Not only um, sitting down on WhatsApp or everything. Find good sources. Read books that are available online. Thank God, even, even if you don't like reading on um, going to the library, you have your, your mobile phone. You have your gadgets with you. You can easily read it. Channel, know how to channel your talent towards wordable points. That's main, make your talent money making. They should be able to pay for your talent. You should be payable. You should be able to pay for your talent and they should be able to um, ask you, have you utilized your talent? You should be able to say yes. Because we are really accountable to God. I'm really emphasizing on this God. God gives us a talent. God and men, not only God. When God asks you, you are accountable to your parents, to your families, to your friends. You are accountable to it. As a shoemaker, to be sincere, I don't even know any food I make for myself does not last up to two days. Because whenever someone comes over, oh, Christy, you make food, they pack my, my, my shoes. I don't wear shoes. There's only one slippers I have as a, sh as a shoemaker. There's only one. So when you are accountable to me, when they see that, okay, you, you do things that is nice and is any you money, you might not start any thousands, six figures now. I think Bali was telling you, my friend was saying that, okay, when you, you can make a footwear for, you can make an, a photo album for 150 for an individual and a corporate body for 750. Yes, I dictate my price. If the doctor Ijala wants to make a footwear now, I won't collect 20,000 from Dr. Ijaola. That's the fact. But if a student comes, I can say, okay, bring 15,000. Let me make a, um, a broke shoe for you. Or a, 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 um, any kind of shoe you want. Just come. I will do it for you. But even in Lagos, in delivering, if I'm collecting an order from someone in, um, on Island, my price is different from someone I'm collecting from um, Ikorodu. When I'm collecting 15,000 from, I mean, like, let's, say, let, let, let's say a pound for 15,000, someone at Ikorodu. On the island, if it's going to Lekki, I collect 25,000. It depends on people you are relating with. But just make sure you are doing the best. You are making your talent, your talent money-making machine. Not only MMM. Your talent should be your money-making machine. That even when they wake you up, you should be able to stand up to it. If you are playing sax or you sing, sing it well. Betty sings. I have, I have, even now I said, you have a lot of people that sing. Betty sings, um, Tabitha sings. We have people that sing. And they still invite them. It's not only when you ask for money. People will give you gifts. And don't be too focused on money. Because there are some times that you work and there will not be money. But with a merry act, it will come back to pay. It comes back in another way. Maybe, you, maybe someone says, okay, you, you make a shoe for someone. And uh, okay, I'm using a shoe because I'm a shoemaker. Sorry, if you, I'm emphasizing more on a shoe. So you make a shoe for some, a footwear for someone, and the person says, Oh, Christy, the footwear you make, you collected less. So people knows the value, they know the quality. Use quality things of it's like if it's a material. We have I have little about tailoring. If it's a we have different materials that you can they sell some for 200, sell some for 400. Use quality things for your customer so it can be a referrer. Most of my job is not on Instagram. I post on Instagram. Even if you check my Instagram, even if you check my Instagram, I, I, I think it's been a while I posted. Most of my jobs are referrer. They are referrer. Maybe someone says, oh, I saw your food. Who made it for you? It's Christiana. Okay. Can you give me a contact? Most of my jobs are referrer. Work on referrer. That's what you have, you don't expect everything. Uh, social media does not work for everybody. It, it doesn't be working well for me. I just post it so I have more followers and I have my little sales on social media. But major of my, most of my um, sales are, is from referrers. So you have to make use of your talent. Read books, make, listen to good talks. Read books, listen to good talks, listen to interviews, watch interviews. Try attending some. I have a friend, although your blessing, she's into um agri fruits. She's she was once a South student too. She's a MDC of Motale Eleko fruits. Eko, normal Eko. She's now making her money. Pap that we take. 
So just your talent. She has a talent in it, in agri. So she, she tried improving herself. So you just have to improve yourself, improve your skills, and try to improve your talent. So that's the major things on talent development. It's so simple to make use of our talent and to improve it, but it depends on your circle. Who are those in your circle? So I'll leave us with our question. It's a question now. Who are your friends? What is your talent? And how do you try building your talent? Just use, I think the little points can really help. The points I said is know your why, formulate your why, why are you doing it? The second point is your required technique. What do you want to do? What are you supposed to do? Who trainer are you supposed to go for? You cannot just sit down and say there's no money. See, there's no money everywhere. You can't wait for your parents to start making it, then sending you money. The little NYC money, try to save some. I saved some for my training and which I have support for my family. So try to make a little savings. Try to make a little savings to improve your techniques. To improve your techniques. The third one is you have to know your SWOT analysis. Analyze your SWOT. That's your weakness, your strengths, your weakness, your opportunity, your opportunities, and your threats. Now try to know them. Take advice. Take advice from people. Not all advice are, 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 are good to listen to, but just listen to everybody and see if it's try to sort the ones that are okay. Then do the work of building your talent. Do the work. The work is majorly on you. Even if you are in the uh, professional world, the work is majorly on you. And the last one is celebrate your success. Celebrate your progress. You have to celebrate yourself every time. When you wake up, you say, yes, you've done well. Christiana, you've done well. Akipali, you've done well. Everyone will be saying, okay, yes, you've done well. Even after my NYC, I even went back to NYC camp that I, we are, um, I was opportune to do some exhibition in Delta in 2017. So it's not that you just see, uh, relocating to somewhere that you have the connections, but you just have to put yourself in, way, in your comfort zone. Not too comfortable, don't feel too relaxed, but you just have to work on your talent. I think I'll have to stop here because I still have other things to let me listen to your questions. I should be able to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Christiana. Please, any question? Okay, okay. Hello, Christy. Thank you. I can Thank hear you, sir. Thank you very much for that lecture. I can hear you again. I'm talking about talent development. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, please. If I, how can I, for instance, maybe have one more than one? I cannot carry the three because you are telling us that we should try and use our talents to make money. Let's say I can sing, I sew clothes, and I can do another thing that I have passion for. How can I marry the three to be able to get uh, funds or to profit from it? That's my question. Okay. Sorry, I will put up my video because I'm actually distracted here. So um, you sing, you, you sew clothes. These two, they have, um, let's say they can be meshed together. If you are singing, you go out to sing. And when you wear a clothes, it's a fashion, the kind of clothes you wear. We advertise you. Someone can see and admire you. Oh, who made this clothes for you? Can you see that? It's even easier for someone to sing and to display his or her products. Because when, I, when you put on a fine clothes, someone will admire, congregations will see you and admire you. So it can be messed together. You can just say, okay, I'm the one who sew it myself. I sew the clothes myself. Do you care for? Okay, this what you, you find someone. So you just have to create time for it. Create time for it. Singing is not easy. There's no job that is easy. Singing is not easy, but it can be met. You have to 
have your time. As I said, you have to plan. Plan for it. Then over time, you can even in, in the long run, you can have a fashion institute and you employ people. Then you have time for your singing. So that's what I think you can do in the long run. But at least from a scratch, you have to advertise, or your, uh, advertise yourself first. I said I learned bead making. Why I left bead was because I don't wear beads. I don't like it. So how will I display my bead making on my neck? Uh, when I, how will I display what, display what I do when I don't wear them? I hope you understand. So that's why I say you can do, it can be meshed together. But and in, in the long run, you can have another vision of having an institute or having a fashion room and facing your song, your singing career. That's what I think you can do, please. Okay, we'll welcome Mr. Afolabi for his question. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine, Mr. Afu. I'm fine. Yeah. Thank you for your very exciting and practical teaching. And it's a wonderful thing for you as a lady to venture into shoe making, which ordinarily many ladies may opt for makeup and all this stuff. And is, you have been doing well. It's an amazing thing. And we are celebrating you. Sir? We are celebrating you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. My question is, how can you advise the young people now in school who are addicted to social media? I was reading one of Bill Gates' book and he said he doesn't watch TV. He has no time for all this internet because he's projecting what will help the world in the next 200 years. And people now are addicted to phone, addicted to social media to the extent that it's becoming a mad thing. So how do you advise them to build their talents and not be slave to social media? Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, I will start with an illustration. Sometime last year, I was at a lo um, location in Ogo State. And where I was at, it was around Minas Covenant University. But I felt like eating puff puff. You know puff puff now. I felt like eating puff puff. My younger brother was craving for puff puff. I was craving for puff puff. But to get the puff puff was quite far, a bit far to where I got, the, I wanted to get it. I just went on social media. And that's the use of social media. I went on YouTube. I searched how to make for fourth. Then he brought out videos. I downloaded like three di different videos of how to make for fourth. The first for fourth I made was very strong. I was following the process. I, I, I bought all ingredients listed. listed. I, was, I, I, I took a clock beside me because you know you have to time it. When I was finding it, the for fourth was so strong. That if you eat one, you are okay for the day. But the next, I tried it again. So now I can make buffo very well. And what, how did I learn it? I learned it through social media. So I don't find any sin in someone. In, but you should know what you're looking for in social media. You can learn catering in social media. If I want to learn makeup now, it won't take more than three days. I will log into my YouTube and learn. There are some things, even now, most of technology that is going, coming up. I said I learned about, I learned a video, um, how to use a machine for shoemaker. I learned from social media. My boss never taught me. So we should know what you are looking for in social media. I hardly watch televisions. It's only when I have programs. Because coming back from the workshop, I'm tired. 
after a noisy place, coming back, I'm tired. So your social media, your social media, Mr. Mr. Um, Ajayi Shegu can testify. I'm not always online. I'm not always on my phone. It's not because I'm being wicked, but because I had other things to do. That's why I said, your, 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 the social media you are using, you should be able to know what you are looking for in social media. It's not only when you start laughing <laughs> or watching movie or downloading movies to watch. I'm, I'm not against it. It's part of relaxation. But don't let your relaxation do more than your work. Hard work. They say hard work beats talent. So hard work beats talent in a, play, in a way, but if you don't improve your talent, if talent is not developed into its full potential and equipped with the right techniques that can take you from being an amateur to a professional, it can pay. Now God, they bless us. Fine. If God bless you, also, your little win, your little income, your little, um, your little talent, you are building on it, using your social media platform to build it, it will be a big win. To be, you come into professional. You just, I listen to, I, I, I joined, though I joined late, but I listen to um, Akikpelu. Akikpelu did not tell you one thing. The time he used in, um, in social media, on YouTube to, to train himself personally, his personal secrets. He will not tell you. No one tells it. No one tells someone. Even a camera in drone, you fly in a drone or, or something. My brother has a drone and he flies. I know the amount of work he does. In social media, I lose. I use less of social media because my work is majorly uh, not that social. But let's use Akikpelu as, as an example. Camera comes up every time, new te techniques. So you should know what you are looking for in social media. You can download movies on your phone, fine, but let your skill, let your talent, when you've discovered it, try to build it. Try to build your talent in a positive way. You can have a talent of being an IT personnel. You know, IT you can be a cyber crime person or use it in a, in as an IO, that's inter intelligence officer. But build your talent in a positive way. Using social media, there's no sin in it, but build it. Build your talent in a positive way. Thank you. Thank you very much again, Miss Christy. Thank you very much for tackling that question very well. I believe your question has been answered, sir. Okay, please, is there any other question? In absence of question, please, I'm going to welcome the Dean for his remark. Uh, thank you, Ms. Singbo. How are you? I'm fine. Very good, it's been a while. Yes, sir. I lost your contact, so that's the issue. Um, <laughs> well, Maybe I should get my shoe this year. <laughs> no problem. You right. will. I have uh, my size is forty-seven point five. Okay, an instep. Is that an instep? Okay, so we're going to do one. Maybe I'll wear it for Christmas. No problem. We we'll talk. Okay. I'll, I will chat you up, sir. <laughs> but my my take is this: that um, you are actually in a very competitive environment when it comes to shoe making. Noting very well that there are a lot of foreign shoes coming into the country, um, from even from China, Italy, um, Enzo products are there, uh, some other Italian products are there, and the people are crazy about them. How do you, as an entrepreneur, you know, navigate through this ordeal to market your shoe product? I know that. Like you said, there are wearers that are not friendly for shoes. And uh, these days, even most of the young people are running away from wearing leather. Now they want to wear sneakers and all that. Even now we wear sneakers on Buba and Shokoto, you know? <laughs> these are kind of um, trend we are seeing. But taking from here is the fact that how do we really navigate the all dual as, a, as, as an entrepreneur, as somebody just coming in into this kind of uh, business, how will it navigate the hurdle? Uh, you know, the waiting is not easy. And the na navigating the hurdle for marketing your product and making a brand uh, where you have big names everywhere. Uh, how do you do that? I would like you to please uh, highlight on this. Thank you. 
All right, thank you, sir. Navigation of your brand is not easy. To set up a brand, it's not easy. So now we, the question is, you have foreign shoes, fine. Foreign shoes, fine. But the question I'll ask you, do your foreign shoes last? There are some things that we, when you, when you try to convince a customer, as an entrepreneur, you have to have a sweet mouth. If they have a sweet mouth, you don't have a customer. So when you try to convince a customer, you try to look at, that's why I said, that's where your SWOT comes in. The weakness of the Italy, shipping in Italy shoes and the cost, at least you won't get a broke shoe that is non-Nigerian. You'll be having like 40,000, 45, a correct shoe. Why you can have an handmade, I, I work with an handmade, an handmade shoe that you get exactly what you want. It might not be 100% exact because it's a machine shoe. A shoe was bought for my dad. Okay, for example, a shoe was bought for my dad from South Africa some years, dad, some years ago. And when I was um, um, trying to open the package, the shoe has already opened. The mouth has opened like a fish, fish mouth. I told my dad, see what, see what, see what was ordered for you. And but the, the advantage of a handmade, you have to tell them your own strength, their own weakness, make it your strength. You have to say, okay, the cost of shipping in shoe from um, Italy down to Nigeria, it's high. Why the cost of making, it's low. Now not be as high as, at least I, I do a, um, a Chelsea boot, an ankle boot for 25,000, 20, it depends. But when you want to get, get a, an ankle boot from outside, from outside Nigeria, you know how much you spend. That's why you have to differentiate your materials. Getting something, there are some materials that you get that I, 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 when I chat someone, I tell you, I don't use inferior materials. So if your materials are the, the materials you use, it's not as authentic as what is shipped in it's automatically. In shoemaking, we have some people that they call supply. The supply people are those who, who sell spam at the roadside of shoe, one five at the other side. The materials they use are leather, are, are rubbers, not leather. They don't use leather, they use rubber. Well, I by, by myself, I use leather. I don't use rubber in any of the materials. So when you try to differentiate, um, try to tell them, okay, um, the shoe you bring, the funny thing is the shoe, most shoes that is important, they are rubber, they are not leather shoes. And the sneakers that we wear now can be made and made. I have an handmade sneakers that I wear. If I want to wear, most of my, all my footwear are handmade because I'm a shoemaker. There's only one I know is, wasn't handmade and an eel that I used for a, a, an, an outing. So that was the only, that's the only shoe I have that is not an handmade. So when you have your own strength, emphasize more on your strength. So that's when your SWOT analysis comes in. You have traits, but you don't let someone push you out be courageous keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing so with time and when you see that your talent is well built you stand out i think that's a little understanding i have about it sir Thanks so very much, Thanks so very much uh, Christy. We really appreciate that. And uh, we most sincerely thank you for making our time today to share with the final year students. Um, uh, I, think, um, I think you will be able to send me your number just now. Uh, so I can hook you up on WhatsApp again, so that um, I can also follow up again. Um, you know, one thing that I need to mention, which is very important about uh, Christy Singbo, is this. 
Sorry, Singbo, because I'm going to mention this. Um, she had a very bad experience losing a mom just immediately, not quite long after your graduation. Yes. And the wife. Yeah, my wife. Mm -hmm. And why she was uh, still getting over that some years, just like two years ago, daddy also passed her. Last year. Last year. And you know, I was like, wow. For a young entrepreneur, that should have killed everything. But this energetic, resilient young lady keep pushing. I respect your courage. I respect your strength. I respect your dedication. And may the God of the Holy Apostle continue to uphold and strengthen you. And I Amen. think I should let people know that you are a, a, a proud Egu. Yes. Yes. Oh. I love the way you dance. Thanks so very much, Mr. Thank Jai. You, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm grateful. Christy, thank, you, thank you very much. Thank you, really sir. Really appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Please, I want to plead with us on this topic, talent development, we have two people, but in the next 30 minutes, OT Brains will just be speaking on talent development. We are not going to take much of your time. We just want to end everything at once. It's really amazing to have you all here because it's not something easy to sit all year from, I don't know when you guys started, but it's not all easy to sit all year hearing to different speakers and, you know, having to focus and learn a lot. So um, I would like to encourage you and I would like to appreciate you for taking your time to be here today. So uh, briefly, I'll be talking on talent development. Sister Christy has spoken, um, I think Belly Manel has spoken as well, so I'll be brief. I just have a, look, a few things to add to what they have said regarding talent development. So I will talk more on um, what talent development is and the ways you can develop your talents as you are going out of the university to establish your individual selves. So what is talent development? Talent development is the process of building up your talents to its full potentials by equipping it with the right techniques that can take you as an individual from an amateur to a professional. It is the process of elevating your raw talents and cultivating the craft to the next level. You know, it is one thing for you to have a talent, and it's another thing for you to know how to maximize that talent to its fullest potential. This is where most of us find it difficult to fix ourselves. We all have talent. We don't know how to, you know, maximize that talent. We don't know how to monetize the talent. We don't know how to, we don't know how to implement it in a way that it would give us the desired results that we want it to give us. Now, there are a few steps that you can use, that you can apply to develop your talent to its full potentials. One of them is, Number one, formulating your why. Formulate the reason why you want to go into this thing. Formulate the reason why you want to develop that talent of yours. Discover the purpose of doing it. If you are a, if you are a singer, why do you sing? Why do you love to sing? Is there a reason why you love to always sing? So formulate your why. Formulate your why. Discover the purpose of doing that which you want to do. So taking time to answer that question for yourself and giving it the right formula will lay a solid ground for you to build on it. Know your why so that it will boost your determination for doing that which you want to do. It will boost your determination to develop that um, talent of yours. Find out the required techniques to implement your talents. This is all about developing your talents. You need to, before, one of the steps you take before developing your talent is to find out those techniques that you need to apply in developing that talent. What are the things you need to learn? For instance, I'm an Adria designer. I produce Adria for a living. Well, so and um, at some point, I discovered I couldn't do. I, I I need to do beyond what I know. I needed to do beyond what I know so that I could serve my market. I could I could um deliver. I could deliver. In order, in order to deliver, I had to go over to learn more, to learn more about the skill. I had to pay for courses that would help me to maximize Adria making. So that I can, you know, reach out to a larger audience, reach out to more, more customers, and also satisfy a lot of people. So you need to develop those talents by learning those techniques that you need to implement it. If you are a singer, for instance, you need to go and learn from those who are in the, in the, in the, in the industry already. You need to go and learn. You need to follow them. 
You might not be very close to them, but you need to follow them. Understand how they pass through the process of starting to becoming who they are today. So you need to understand the techniques that are required to develop that talent of yours. And how do you do this? You have to research about it. The process of researching is like I've said, you need to know those who are into, in that industry. If you are a if you are a photographer, for instance, you need to know those that are doing well in the industry of photography. Understand how they started their journey and how they are going through it, how they are, how they are solving problems in their industry and how you can also solve those problems. So you need to do some research about your crafts. Do some research about the talents of yours. Know the categories you qualify for. The truth is you can't do everything. You can't even know everything. So you need to understand your strengths, where you think, oh, if you do this thing, you will perform better in this area. So discover those categories that you qualify for and go and develop on those categories. Go and develop on those categories. As much as there are a lot of photographers, not all, not, all, not all photographers do photography for everybody. They have areas that they are specialized on. There are people who are specialized in wedding photographies. There are people who are specialized in product photography. There are people who are specialized in going for various outings. So you know the category which you want to fall under. So you can know where you're going to be making your research on. So you're going to be making your research on that category. You don't just have to go and you know, start learning everything. You, if you, even if you learn anything, you cannot do it all by yourself. So know the categories that you qualify for. Know those categories which you can perform better on. Now, no other areas you need to co collaborate and partner with stakeholders in your industry. Know the, cat the categories, the areas where you need to collaborate. Most likely, areas where you need to collaborate and partner with people are areas where you think, okay, you're not doing too well with Probably those are your weaknesses. Those are the areas you know that you need to collaborate with people in your industry with. You can't do everything. So areas where you feel, okay, there's somebody who is good at this thing. You know, you feel oh, this person knows better than I do in this area or in this, um, in this niche, collaborate with them. Discuss ways you, what, both of you can collaborate and partner. Have agreements regarding your collaborations so you don't miss out in the industry. Because if you have to say, okay, you want to do only the things that you know how to do and you don't collaborate, you miss out on a lot of deals. A lot of deals that you'd have taken and collaborated with people who can do them. You miss out on those, those deals. So you need to collaborate. You need to collaborate. Now, Talking about knowing your strengths and weaknesses. I know we've heard about this SWOT analysis a lot, but the truth is SWOT analysis is very, very important. Sister Simbo spoke about that a lot as well. Knowing your SWOT analysis will help you to know your strengths and know your weaknesses. When you know your SWOT analysis, when you know your SWOT analysis, you'll be able to bank on your strengths and partner with people who are good at their weaknesses of yours. Probably you are not good at a particular area in your talent or in your skill, you'll be able to know how to partner with people who are good in those areas. It will help you a lot. Now, when you now know your strength, you will be able to develop on that strength. It is your strength that you know that you'll be able to maximize or you'll be able to you'll be able to um you'll be able to focus more strength on that more, you'll be able to focus more on that strength of yours. So knowing your strength is very important to develop your talent. You know when you've known your strength you'll be able to create a formula for, for it for instance here at the brain textiles when i started the brand i was unable to i was unable to um follow through the processes that i was taught when i where i learned at the and the reason is because the way they did at the then was more of the, it was more of the olden days the, you know the old centuries way of doing at the so i was unable to you know implement most of those things because it's not what i really wanted to do i wanted to do something beyond what what is the regular, what people know, know, know about address. I wanted to do something beyond that. So what I did was I had to go through everything I, I, I was taught about the address scheme. And I created a formula for my brand. I created systems and procedures to implement those things for my brand. So you might not necessarily copy the things that you learn. You might not necessarily do exactly what you have taught. You can go back to the drawing board and look at all those things you have, you have been taught and look at ways you can implement those things in your own brand or in your own skill set. So you don't have to necessarily do the things that everybody's doing. You can stand on your own, you can stand alone by focusing on something and creating a formula for your skill set, creating a formula for that talent of yours. 
Now, I'll move over to taking constructive advice from people who are above you. You see, you can't know it all, like I've said. So it is important, it's very important that you take constructive advice, but do not allow people to decide for you on what to do. You are the one who should eventually sit down and take decisions for your brand, take decisions for your skill set, take decisions for those talents of yours that you want to develop. But you need to ask for advice from people, ask for advice from your mentors, ask for advice from people who are doing better than you in the industry, so that you can look at ways you can um, add to the knowledge you already know, or add to the idea you already have about that skill set of yours, add to the idea you already have about that um, talent of yours. So by taking constructive advice, you can know where you need to make adjustments. You can know where to, you need to make improvements on yourself. Now, the hard part about it is doing the work. That's where most of us get tired. That's where most of us get frustrated. You really need to do that work. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be an easy process, but you need to put so much effort in doing the work. You know, when you, are, you have a talent, it is going for you to have that talent and it's going for you to monetize that talent. So you need to involve in activities that would uh, promote your talent, activities that would help you to develop your talent. What are those kind of activities? Activities that would give you more funds, and activities that would, um, that would um, create the resources you need to maximize your talent to the highest potentials. So you need to know those activities, jot those activities down. For instance, in Algeria production, we have some specific activities that we know that, okay, it gives us more profits in our business every day. It helps us to reach out to more customers. It helps us to, uh, it helps us to do those things that we always aim for. You know, we have goals, we have targets that we set monthly. So we all, we all, we do list those activities down so that we can do more of those activities. We can, um, Focus our energy on these activities and leave other things that are not very, very, very much important. So know those things that are important, those, that, those things that are really important in your skill, those things that are important in your talent. So you do those things more so that you can get the desired results that you need in your skill set. The last thing is celebrating your progress. You see, the truth is when you don't celebrate yourself, you can't know when you are doing well. You can't know how you are doing well. You need to celebrate yourself. You need to make noise about yourself. If you don't make noise about yourself, people will not make noise about you. It is you who know the effort you are putting into that business of yours. It is you who know the effort you put into learning that skill. It is you who know the effort you put into developing that talent of yours. So you need to celebrate yourself on a regular basis. You need to hype yourself. You need to be proud of yourself. You need to, be, you need to make yourself happy all the time so that you can be motivated enough to do more. Because we are in a country whereby there are really no systems and procedures to do a lot of things. We all are trying to gather knowledge online Get that knowledge from mentors, get that knowledge from here, from left and right. There is no specific procedure to do a lot of things. So if you don't celebrate yourself, you'll be frustrated. You need to celebrate yourself. You need to make yourself happy often. You need to, you need to, you need to make yourself happy by doing things that will give you joy and happiness. That, oh, what I'm doing, I'm happy doing this thing. So that's why when you understand your why, when you understand the purpose of doing what you are doing, you can develop pleasure. You can derive pleasure from doing that skill set and from doing and from uh, implementing that talent of yours. So talent development is all about understanding the process of building your talent to the full potentials. And like I've said, I listed that you need to formulate your why. You need to find out the required techniques to implement your talents. You need to know your strengths and your weaknesses. You need to create a formula, a formula that works for you. A formula that works for you and you know, that's what will make you stand out in your industry. That's what will make you to stand out as a singer. That's what will make you to stand out as an individual. That is what will make your voice to be earned. So you need to create your own formula. Have your, a way of doing your own thing. You can't, do the, your, you can't do things the same way everybody's doing it. You can't do things the same way everybody in your industry is doing it. Have a specific way of doing things so that people will see, you know, or oh, when they see your work, they'll know that this is so-so person that did this thing. They'll know that it's so person that you are not did this. They'll know this is your design. They'll know this is your skill set. They'll know this is your signature. So create a formula for doing things so that people cannot, even if they are trying to copy you from the surface, they cannot copy you from the index. They can't know exactly what you are doing. So um, take constructive advice. I said, I talked about that. Do the work. Put a lot of effort into doing that work of yours. Doing those things that matter a lot in your business. Doing those things that matter a lot in your skill set. Also celebrate your progress. I've said you should celebrate your progress by making yourself happy, 
by making noise about yourself, let people know that this is what you are doing. Celebrating yourself very often will help you to, to motivate to motivate you to dream more all the time and to motivate you to achieving all you desired for. Um, I think um, at this point, I would like us to ask questions regarding talent development and regarding the ways I listed. I've listed a lot of things regarding how to develop your natural talents to its fullest potential. So I'd like us to ask questions. If there are questions, ask those questions. If there are questions you need to ask, if there are clarifications that you need regarding the things I've discussed about, please do ask those questions now. Thank you very much. So I'll be waiting for questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Joel, for that wonderful presentation. Please, is there any questions? We're going to be welcoming questions now. Any question? Okay, please. Okay, um, good afternoon, Mr. Oti Brins. We are good glad afternoon. to have you. My name is Adjoke, and what I want to ask is, we have people who have multiple talents, not just a talent. There are people who can sing, and at the same time, they can speak, and at the same time, they can do this, they can do that. And I think I used to hear someone say, if a man is good in all ways, like you, you can do a lot of things, that that man is, I, I can't really remember, but that man doesn't have, maybe probably that man is a lazy person or something, or he doesn't have one thing or the other to do. So supposing I have many talents and I'm good in them, how do I single out the one I know I should base on? Thank you. Okay. Um, if I would get your question well, you mean if you have quite a number of talents, quite a number of things you are good at doing, how can you um, single out that which is that which you should focus on? How can you single out which you should focus more on? If, if that's your question, am I right? Hello, are you with me? Yes. Are yes, you with me? Uh, yes. Good. Good. The thing is, um, you see, <laughs> we are in a world whereby we desire to do a lot of things. I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, I want to do that. You see, the truth is, um, I used to tell people, you can't do everything. You can't do everything. Yeah, you can have a lot of talents, but there will be one which you know within yourself that you do most often. There will be one which you know within yourself that is your strength. There will be that particular talent. You even know how to sing. You know how to dance. You know how to speak. You know how to, um, you know how to play ball. Or you are good at sports, you know, you have a lot of talent and all of that. You know, there's going to be one that you know within yourself that you do most often. Now, how do you know these things? Even people around you will tell you that if they call, if they are looking for somebody that knows how to do this, it is your name they will mention. If they are looking for somebody that, that's perfect at this, it's your name they will mention. So, what you need to do is once you've, once you've been able to identify that particular thing that you feel you derive pleasure more in, that thing that you like every time when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you think about that particular thing. What you now need to do is sit down and look for ways you can develop that particular talent. You know, it is good when you are when you are perfect in one. Now, when you are good at everything, you're not perfect in one, one single thing. It is good when that when people know that oh, this person is is a good when it comes to when it comes to uh, making let's say a fashion designer, for instance. When it comes to making bridal wears, this person is very perfect at it. Unlike when you are sewing bridal wears. You are making natives, you are making casual wears, you are making everything, you are selling to everybody. Nobody will know you as a, a guru in this particular thing. So when you focus on one particular thing, you can channel your energy on that one thing and you know duplicate your results. You'll be able to perform better in that particular thing, you'll be able to make more money from that particular thing. Most people that try to do a lot of things all together, they end up not achieving anything. Most people that try to do this. Do that, do this one. They want everybody to know, okay, they are, they are, they are well talented. They want to do everything all together. At the end of the day, they do not achieve a whole lot of things. But when you achieve, when you, are, when you focus on one particular thing, you'll be able to achieve more on that thing. You'll be able to, you'll be able to um, put your focus on that thing and you know, you'll be able to derive your strength for that particular thing. So what I can advise to young adults is that focus on one particular thing. 
Learn that craft. Be good at it before you move to another one. So when you are good at that particular thing and you can duplicate your results, you can even uh, add more people, add more people to your team so that they can help you in achieving those things or achieving those uh, those niche or those particular field where you are specializing. While every other skill that you want to develop on, you can go and develop on those things. But if you say you want to do this one today, you want to do this one today, tomorrow, you'll be overwhelmed that you never know which one to do. You never know which one to focus more your, your, your strengths on. So the idea is to focus on one, one that you know that you derive much more pleasure in doing it. Then leave the rest. You can you can go back to those ones when you are done on focusing on that particular thing. And when you do, once you've been able to develop that particular skill set, or once you've been able to develop that particular talent, I hope I've answered your question. Yes, you have. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Otterbrains, for tackling You're that welcome. question very well. Please, is there any other question? Any other question, please, from anybody? Okay. Hello. Good morning. How are Mr. Fo. <laughs> Hello, my brother. Thanks for your wonderful delivery. It's quite amazing. My question is that somebody like you that you are into Adire, and yes, there are customary people that have been into this business from ancient time. And they will believe that if you go to Abel Kuta, you get the Adire. How do you have a, a, special, a, a special touch that attracts the old and the new generation so that the old people do not send you out of business? Because they will say, we have been there before. <laughs> now coming into a traditional business that has historical and uh, is historical yeah. lineage so how do you make your own touch to link between the young and the new generation thank you very much okay so uh, mr Pilabi, i get your question perfectly and i will just answer that you know i said during the when I was giving my notes, I mentioned that um, under the ways you can develop your talent to its full potential, that you should um, create your own formula. Creating your own formula is the way out. That's the way you can stand out in your industry. And that was why I mentioned that you can't, you can't do everything. You can't do everything. And you know, Adria Itoku, yeah, where you make Adria in Abeokuta, when you get there today, you see a lot of things. There are a lot of marketers there selling the same thing, something, selling something similar. Same yardage, the same Adire fabrics. But here, what we do is quite different. We've been, we've been able to create a formula for our brand. And how do we do that? We have been able to set aside a niche for ourselves. We don't just do Adire, all, all Adire, no. We have a specific kind of Adire we produce. And we have a set of people we sell to. So we are not, as Adire to cool more, they are, as they are selling the Adire, we are also selling our own. In fact, I'd like to tell you that we are not where our business is situated is not in a, it's not in a public place where people can easily get across to us. It's in an environment where you would most likely ask that why are these people doing that during this space? How do they get their customers? The reason why we've been able to continue making it in our business today is because we've been able to craft a niche for ourselves. So a good way to establish your business in a way that you'll be able to stand out, even when there are a lot of people in the industry, where even when there are a lot of competitors in the industry in the industry is to craft a niche for yourself. There are various areas that we can satisfy in the textile industry. There are people who are dealing with interiors. There are people who are dealing with um, adrenal for There are people who are doing with branded adrenal outfits. There are people who are doing with uniforms. There are various areas that you can craft a niche for yourself. So what we have done at the Great Textiles is to craft a niche for ourselves. We are not doing the old general adrenal, not even the olden days adrenal. We are, we, are, we are focused on creating contemporary outfits. We are focused on creating Adire outfits that are in vogue now, with the fabrics that are in vogue, like outfits that are in vogue. Not the olden days fabric that you buy Adire in five yards or the actual okay. No, we are creating collections that are, are, are more of the conventional one, not the olden days kind of Adire outfits. So we have a particular set of people that we sell our Adire outfits to, not just the general public. 
Thank you, sir. I think I've answered your question, Mr. Flag. Thank you once again, Mr. Joel. Okay. Any other question? In okay. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you Good for afternoon. the wonderful lecture. Um, my question goes thus. Okay, sir, so I want to know if it's advisable to get a loan for a business or because when I was in my high seat then, my advisor told me that it's better you get a job first, then the money used, money given to you and the job used as a bit of business. But some people go to use loan and wait, get a loan and they still fall on back. So which one is more advisable as this um, businessman starting up? Thank you, sir. Good question. I love that question anyway. You see, the truth is a lot of business owners will tell you to get a loan. And at a stage, there's a stage in your business when you need to get a loan. As a startup, I don't advise startups to get a loan. The stage in your business when you need to get a loan is when you understand the, the procedures and the systems of your business. How can you get a loan for a business when you cannot even define how you can get the profit from that business? You need to learn that art first. You need to learn that skill first. And start from the scratch. You know, the reason why most of us want to get a loan for a business is because oh, we want to build that business, we want to make it very big from the start. No, you need to start small. You see, the process of starting small is the process where you are going to discover your mistakes, your errors. You are not meant to be making mistakes when you are getting a loan. You cannot be using the, uh, the money you get from a loan to be making mistakes. Your, the person who ever loaned you or whoever gave you that grant is not waiting for you to be making mistakes with, with the money they borrowed you. They don't care if you are making losses. You need to return that money back at, at a certain point. So you cannot be using a loan to be doing, a, to be doing a, this one is working for me, this one is not working for me. You need to understand your business first before you can start taking a loan for that business. Or else you would flop. That's why most people go into business and they crash in the first year. Because they're all about creating a very big business so people can know that, oh, they are very big. You have to start from the scratch. Let me dive into that. When I started my agile business, I started with as little as but I will see 500 general. You will not believe me. And I'll tell you why I said I started with 500 general. I, I you know, I was in some, I don't go again in this. And I think I know, I know some of you here. And if, if you truly do know me, you know how I started. I started my agile business by dying fabrics in the hostel for, my, for, for the male, male students. What I did then was I was collecting clothes from them, like their faded clothes, and I was dying for them. So most of them will have, will have to pay me before I start dying for them. All I did was to, Start with the basic thing I have, I, I have, which is the knowledge. I have the knowledge. You can even start your business with the knowledge you have. That's a resource on its own. So sometimes you don't have to have that fund before you can start. You can start from that very little thing you, know, you have, which is your talent, which is your resource. You don't have to start by getting a loan for that for that business. If you get the loan from the business, how can you even how can you be sure that you're able to get that money back? Because you don't even understand how the, the business runs. You don't even understand the mistakes you are going to meet you are going to make in that business so you before you can get a loan in the business you must have used perhaps maybe one year or two years two years in that business and you understand the systems and procedures of systems and processes rather of your business of your skill before you start taking a loan for that skill you must know how much you make in a month you must know how much profit you make in a month how much profit you make in a year before you start taking a loan because if you take a loan now how are, we sure, how are you sure that you can pay up within a year or within the stipulated period of time that they're giving you to pay up for that loan? So what you need first is to learn. Learn that skill. Learn how to sell your markets, your products. Learn how to learn how others in your business are doing it, how they are selling. So learn how to sell your ads. Learn how to sell your, your skill. Learn how to make money from it first before you start loaning yourself for that business. Now, you ask the question about taking a job. I advise business owners like startups to take a job because in Nigeria, the truth is you need money to start a business. That's the honest truth. As little as it can be, maybe 1,000 naira, 5,000 naira, 100k, 200k. The good thing is there are a lot of businesses today that you don't even need a lot of money to start. I said it. I said I started my business with as little as 500 naira. And what did I do? Like I said, I was collecting clothes from my father. I started with my roommates, Daniel. Daniel was my roommate when I started at Jure. So what I did for him was I collected, I collected um, his faded clothes and I died it for me. And he paid me 500 naira. 
for each of those jeans. I think I died about four jeans, and I was just collecting five hundred. It was very little jeans, but I was really happy that I was dying some of these clothes. I started with that. Over time, I started collecting clothes from various students. They saw my work and they'd be like, oh, I love who did this thing. And I started getting referrals from friends and families. So one way to build your business from the start is to get closer to friends and family. They are the best people who will support you. At the long run, you cannot depend on your friends and families for your business. At the long run, you can't depend on them. But for a start, you need to depend on your friends and families for your business. So you need to bank on them. They are the first people you are supposed to focus on. Get money from them. Get patronage from them to start your business. But talking about loaning for, for a startup, I don't advise you loan. Your, you start loaning for your, your business from the scratch. It is not good for your business. It is not good. It is not good. In fact, when you start big, you might fall down and you might not find it easy to go to come up again. But when you start small, when you fall down, you'll be able to come up again. Because you understand the processes that, you, that took you to your stage. But when you just get money from somebody to, to, to start your business, how would you be able to maximize that profit enough when you don't even know how to raise capital for yourself? You must learn how to raise capital before you, you start money for your business. If you, can't learn, if you can't raise capital from your business, a business, how are you sure that that money that you've loaned, you'll be able to make profit from it? You must learn how to raise capital from your business before you start loaning for that business. That is my advice for startups. Thank you. I hope I've answered your question. Uh, Sounds as one more question. So I know okay. you, you finished from computer science. Yes. Uh, yes. So now you went into time die. So what yes. challenges as a computer science student? You know, you have to know basic programming, you have to be doing this, consistency, all those things. So how, how do you do it? Where is it? Maybe sometimes you go to your computer science, you sit down in all. How do you combine it to out there? Because you are the best in computer science, you have to still show yourself in your field. So how do you do it, sir? Okay, the truth is this. Um, number one, I didn't plan I would be into a career or anything. Like, it was never my plan. I never knew if they told me that I'll be an actuary designer, and I would say it's a lie. I developed um, passion for for computer science from, from when I was in secondary school. So I never knew I was even going to do computer science. But over time, I, I developed passion for agility. That's why I said discovering your, discovering your, I think that was when I talked about formulating your why. The, the reason why you want to go into this thing. The reason why you're learning this school. Anyway, you are done with, uh, with SAW now and you already have your, maybe you are, I think you're learning computer, you, you studied computer science, if I'm yes. right. Yes, sir. Yes, good. So um, how I was able to do this was, uh, you know, the, the thing is, there is no skill. I don't think there's any skill in this century that we are in now that you don't need computer science for. Yes. yes. If you yourself you not know, apply it, yeah. you would need to partner with people who are in that field for your business. For instance, I do my own, I do my digital marketing myself. I don't, I don't, I don't hire people for my digital marketing. My sponsored adverts on Facebook, on Instagram, on various social media platforms, I do them myself. So search for different textiles on Google. You see our profile on, 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 on Google My Business. I did all those things myself. So my knowledge about computer science has helped me to infuse um, the um, technology into my business. Let me put it that way. It has helped me to infuse technology into my business. It has helped me in making decisions for my business. It has helped me to infuse a, a lot of ideas that are IT related into my business. Yeah. So when you want, you know, the truth is even Learning computer science alone, you can do it. You can evolve. You can do it as a business. There are web programmers. There are there are web program web programmers that are that are big businesses. That are big big business owners that people even train. That people will design websites for for individuals for businesses. So you don't, you might not even die from computer science if you are sure that okay you developed your skill in computer science. You can focus more on learning more on that computer science that you learned in South. Do you have to acquire more skills on it? And monetize your knowledge. You can monetize it. You don't have to go and learn another skill. For me, I developed passion for textiles while I was doing my IT. Do you have to while I was doing my IT? So I developed textiles, uh, passion for textiles. I went out, I went to Koku Mall with my mom to buy some material fabrics. Then she wanted to buy some material fabrics from, for her staffs. So what I did, I just followed that. I just saw people, I saw Adria, I was like, ah, do, do they really make these things? So, you know, I was really overwhelmed. I was like, wow, I wish I can actually learn this thing. And that was where, where I developed passion for it. And I went over to go and learn it. So I developed passion for Adria, I think, when I was in 200 level. So then I had to deviate a little bit. So, you know, because I already developed passion for 
you have to not do a degree and same time to do computer science. Well, I left my, I completed my computer science and I did well anyway. But then I focused more on Nigeria because it was what I derived, derived passion in. That was why I was talking to, um, I don't know who spoke up now, asking questions about how to do many things at the same time. And I advise that you can't do everything at the same time. Yes. But you can apply the knowledge in A to B. Okay. The knowledge in your computer science, you can apply it to other skills of yours. Do you know what I'm saying? The knowledge in music, in dancing, you can apply it to your fashion business. Ask me how. There are people who do TikTok videos. You can start dancing and be wearing your clothes. People will just be laughing. Oh, this one is even dancing. Market your product by dancing. People will be like, oh, wow, she's a dancer and she's a fashion designer. You can apply it, you can, but you don't have to do it saying, okay, you want to be a dancer. Do your dancer today, tomorrow, do your fashion. No, you can actually find a way to do things that are related to dancing that you can implement in your fashion business. Yes, sir. Things that are related in computer science that you can implement in your, in your fashion business. Things that are related with computer science that you can, that you can implement in your photography business. So find a way to infuse ideas in your, in your, in your course of study to your business. I think that's just the way you can do it. And I've, I've, I've explained how I also did mine. I hope I've been able to answer your question. Yes, sir. God bless, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, we'll be closing the questioning section as I'll be calling on the Dean of Students to give his remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Otsi. Uh, thank you very much, Otito. We are most for giving us and uh, sharing from your practical experiences. Uh, they are quite um, wonderful, and I sincerely agree with you. You've said a number of things that are very, as inexpensive in the times that if you are going to Lagos Business School, for instance, uh, these are things you are going to pay a lot of money for. Uh, there are yeah. short courses, uh, and uh, looking at it this way, uh, I remember when you were in school in this university. You didn't, you didn't have something like this as a final year student. Yes. Uh, but this is what we are doing now. And I think that if some of you have had this opportunity of having your alumni talk to you, I think- It would have helped us a lot. Pardon? It would have helped us a lot if we had this opportunity. <laughs> we are also, that the people who have the opportunity now will appreciate it the more. Yes. Uh, and nevertheless, you know, let me just say some few things about you because uh, you know I patronize you. I'm your customer. Yeah, very well, sir. <laughs> Good. And, um, maybe I should just let them know that um, indeed I knew you started small. You started on campus, uh, yes, and sir. some of the staff will give their clue to you to help yes. them die and all that. And you were doing very fantastic with that. And then when you started in my area in the Badon, you know, and. Um, I study your business ideology, the location of your office, uh, which is a building. You know, it's a whole building, but you are smart enough to get a building in that location so that yes. you won't pay too much for it. Yes. Yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> if that building is to be at Bodija, you will be so serious. So I got the business logic. And, um, uh, you know, I, but you are now everywhere speaking with NYC giving practical entrepreneurship orientation to coppers all around Nigeria. And that's one of the things he's doing. Please give him a round of applause for that. So. You know, um, and um, you see, your brand is actually, and just recently, you started importing clothes to Nigeria. Because yes, you wanted us to come and buy wholesale, all those things, you know. And um, I begin to see that this is beautiful idea that you pick up from this and uh, you are taking it to places. Sincerely speaking, I, I cannot, I uh, have not got a branded shirt of potato to patronize. So, you know, I have to say that. <laughs> so maybe my staff in student affairs will get some brand from you. Taiwo, my battle point will not let you know. So if you can't our number, please can't, Mr. Taiwo. Thanks so very much. Uh, and um, I, I think I must let our colleagues here know, and our student, final year students to know that your mom, former actor, Registrar of this university, and um, yes. is and you refuse to be employed where she is because she has capacity to <laughs> employ you, <laughs> but you choose to be an employer of labor. 
And that is very good. <laughs> and uh, may the Lord continue to bless you and honor you. Amen. We really appreciate this time you shared with us. But one question. Yes, sir. I would like you to answer time. Up. I can't hear you, please. I can't how hear you. Did, how did you? Your voice is breaking, please. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. How did you save up money? Saving money towards building capital. Aside getting soft loan from parents, family, and friends, which is a kind of soft loan, you don't pay interest. Are you hearing that? Yes, I'm with you, sir. Which is a cheap, a kind of a cheap source of a loan. It's a loan, technically. Yes. But it's just without interest. So, yes. But how, on your own, did you save up money? How did you go about it in starting your business? I know for now you are not using Mercedes Benz, but you are moving around. So yes, sir. these are practical areas we might need to mention. Do we need to buy so many big things? I know as a student, you must have sacrificed certain things in the bid to save up money. And when you were doing your NYSC and all that, could you just please share a little on that so that it can be a good take home for us? Thank you. Okay, sir. So I'll talk a little about that. And that was where I would mention NYC. I must be sincere that NYC helped me a lot. It helped me a lot because I was able to, yeah, I don't know, collecting 19,800 naira debt. But yes, that 19,800 naira, I never touched it. I never touched it. Every month I was saving my 19,800 naira. And I actually saved more from. The little money I was making from my business, I started from the scratch. I didn't have to buy machineries and all of that because Adria is the kind of business whereby you don't, you don't need to get machines for it. It's handmade business, so you could actually start from the comfort of your home. You can do that from the comfort of your home. So what I was able to do was I was able to start with the little resource I had, which was number one, my skill. And I, like I said, I had to advertise to my friends and families. People in Sao helped me a lot because they patronized me there. Even though it was little, but it really helped my business a lot. I was able to, I was smart enough to save from the little I was making in my business. And I was able to save as little as over 60 to 100,000 a month, even from my startup. I would save from NYC. I would save from uh, the money my parents were giving me for, for, up, for my upkeep, for my, um, for my pocket money. Yeah, I was saving from that. And I was also saving from the money I was making for my business. I paid little attention to buying um, resources for my business. I, don't, I didn't you know it was not a strategy for people to know that I was big. I was not ready for people to see me as a very big brand. I wanted people to relate to my beginning. So I was sharing every bit of the process of my beginning to my customers. So they saw how I was dying under the ring, how I was delivering clothes to customers with clothes on my head. I would snap pictures, make videos. People are seeing the efforts I'm putting into my business. And these are where I get support from friends and families. This is where you need to build on your social capital. You need to build your social capital. You need to network with people. People need to know about you. You need to share your story with friends and families every day. It's something you have to do consistently. So it is when you do them consistently that you're going to get results from it. The truth is there is no amount of money that you need that, that will be able to give you the desired results you want for your business. So what you can only do is to continue showing up every day. So what I did was I was showing up every day. I was saving up from the little I was getting from NYC. I was saving up from the little I was getting from my business for, for a start. Like I said, I didn't have money to do sponsored adverts when I started. I didn't have money to pay influencers when I started. But I was able to talk to friends and families to buy from me. And they were supporting me. And because I was delivering a good job for them, they were referring friends and families to me as well. So that was what I was able to, to use to start up my business from the scratch. I didn't start big. So it was the little money I was saving that I was able to use to get a place for my business I was able to equip my business with facilities. I was able to you know, get staff to work for my business. And that was how I started my business. That was how I was able to raise funds for my business. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Otito. You're welcome, sir. We really appreciate your lecture 
and we pray that God will continue to promote your business. Amen. More and more in the name of Jesus. Amen. So thank you for your time. Now I want to appreciate. Uh, you just stay. Yes, sir. We want to thank you once again for this lecture. And uh, we welcome, want to thank all the alumni still on the platform. And uh, we want to thank you so very much, all of you, for uh, giving us, uh, giving back to Sao in this way. You see, one thing we will always appreciate, and which the world is not really celebrating, especially the younger ones today, is knowledge. Knowledge is the greatest thing one can get from each other. And this knowledge you share today, I know some of our students seated here appreciate it so much. And uh, I know they are going to, some of them will contact you as a mentor and they be your mentee. You can see how you, how you navigate between computer science and Adire. Maybe I will be calling you computerized Adire, man. <laughs> You know, spending four years in computer science and uh, you turn out to be... A, and uh, you see, maybe I should also mention that uh, he could design this shirt and wear it as a direct completely now. You know, that's how his technology has gone. He can turn what I'm wearing now with a beautiful design in a direct. You know, yes, and sir. I think I have, that's what we have in our office now. The one that yes, just in the office. So uh, we really appreciate that. And this is how to okay. give back to the university. And this is how we will continue to promote you. And very soon, you. You, have to, you have to come physically to the university. We are, no problem, we are doing something to bring you around. So thank right, you sir. very much. And thanks so very much to the alumni. Uh, may the local welcome, you, all of you. All right, my brother. Thank, thank, you. Sir. All right, sir. thank you very much. At this junction, I would like to appreciate the Dean of Students because I can remember last year, when we were planning the last final year dinner, he said, Mr. Ajayi, I would have loved us to have this, what we are having today with the previous set. Let me just share this. Yesterday, someone who graduated last year, now in person of Toby, she was in my office to sign our clearance. She now told me, Mr. Ajayi, I said, yeah, I'm jealous. I said, what happened? He said, why didn't you guys organize this kind of thing during our own set? And I had to plead with her. I said then the time was short. Two, COVID and other things affected. So please and please, I know we will have taken one or two things from this lecture. Please, all the slides, everything will be made available to you. We will, I will try as much as possible. Betsy has said, I sent her own slide. I will speak with uh, Akin Pelu and others who made slides so that you can have them for keeps and can be of help to you. I also want to appreciate Mr. Folabi for making our time. Today is public holiday, but we are here. Try to make sacrifices to see that you get the best. I would also like to appreciate Mr. Taiwo.